welcome to Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington, where we have just gotten underway in this 85th meeting between Washington and Washington State. No score, but the Cougars are on the move. Along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twybell. And folks, we're happy to be here where it is snowing and the wind is blowing and it's cold. It's, it's 31 degrees, the wind is swirling, but nothing has stopped Drew Bledsoe from marching his team on first possession down to the 25-yard line. First and 10, Sean Bay right there, the lone setback with trips to the wide side, and they'll screen it out to Sean Bay. Turned inside, and a terrific play made by James Clipper, the inside backer from Seattle, the senior. The weather today, well, you know how the weathermen are. Last night, they were calling for a slight chance of showers, maybe a little snow flurry. Temperature 31, wind chill 13 degrees, winds 15 to 35 miles an hour. Half mile visibility getting a little bit better. And over the next three to four hours, we're expecting eight to 10 inches of snow. I'll tell you what, it's colder than ice cream going down the wrong way right now. <laughs> there is a chill here. Second down and 12, a loss of two. As Bledsoe checking off at the line of scrimmage. And Philip Bobo in motion to the near side. They'll hand it to Sean Bay right there. And again, 53, James Clifford. He came into this game with 73 tackles on the season. And as you look at Drew Bledsoe, the junior from Walla Walla, over 6,600 yards, 42 touchdowns, 32 interceptions. And our diehard starting lineups in the backfield, Sean Bay right there, the lone setback, Bobo Schecksneider, Davis, the wideouts, and Clarence Williams, the tight end. Up front, Bailey, Dunning, Tobeck, Pimiskern, and Tribble, Iker, a starter out for the year with a back surgery. This is the opening drive of the game, third down and 13. Against the wind is Washington State at the moment. And coming near side, dangerous pass, but caught. C.J. Davis down to the six-yard line. Josh Moore was there and had nothing but about 80 yards in front of him. Josh Moore, sophomore cornerback, has been Washington's best man-to-man -man cover. But watch here, he takes a chance in going for the ball. He puts one hand up, doesn't knock it away, Great concentration by C.J. Davis, leading receiver on this football team. That was the most difficult position for the, of the drive for the Cougars. The first third down situation, and they completed it. Shane Powell-Cole was a man that finally knocked him out as Derek Sparks is checked into the backfield. Along with Sean Bay right fair play action by Bledsoe. And the intended receiver was the backup tight end, Brett Carolyn. Josh Moore was there on the coverage. And Carolyn was open, but it appeared as though the quarterback, Drew Bledsoe, had a little bit of a hard time getting a handle on the football. He had a hard time getting a handle on it, but you also saw something by the tight end there. Tight ends are not going to be anxious to move. Watch him. He gets the ball in the air, but the tight end just found the spot in that snow, and he's not moving because he's afraid of slipping. You're not going to be able to make adjustments last minute on passes like that. Eighth play of this drive for the Cougars. Hand off to Sparks, look at him slip, look at him slide inside the five, down to the three. They wrote a song about that, didn't they? Yeah. James well, Clifford was there for his third tackle. Look more day. like Brian Boitano. Oh, wow. Oh, I'll tell you what, Lynn, I'd rather be out here than in a dome somewhere. I mean, this is this is what football is about sometimes, as we check out the Washington defense, and it's a good one. Mason, Fontaine, Farr, and Hoffman up front. The backers for the Huskies in our diehard starting lineup, Hoffman, Clifford, and Fields. And the secondary for Washington, Bailey Moore Jones and Palakoa. Third down and goal from the three. Shambay right fair the hole. Touchdown. His ninth rushing touchdown of the year, the second leading rusher in the Pac-10, and Derek Sparks gave him the lead block. Right there, came in this game with over 1,000 yards, but look at the great blocking he gets right here. That's number five, Sparks, just pounding people at the line of scrimmage, pushing the hole into the end zone for right there. Aaron Price, the coach's son, will attempt the point after and move it up front. There was a Washington defensive player that moved across the line of scrimmage. 
and whether he was drawn off by a Washington State offensive lineman is what those guys are talking about. And it's going to be against Washington. As they move the ball up the one yard for this penalty, Roger, very important drive and critical drive early in this ball game. They defer, they took the ball against the win, marched it all the way down the field, nine plays, 80 yards against one of the top defensive teams in the Pac-10, and they score the touchdown. Washington third in the nation, scoring defense, giving up just 10 points a game. And after talking it over, they still haven't decided what they're going to do. <laughs> Mike Price talked long and hard about his team having confidence, playing their game, and being equal to this Washington Husky football team. The penalty refused. Price has made 23 of 24 extra points so far this year. This is going to be a difficult day for the snapper, the holder, the kicker, everyone involved in the kicking game. Hit the upright. No good. You saw Price there really try to plan himself to make sure he didn't slip. The Cougars lead the Huskies 6-0 from Pullman. Why is the Honda Accord the best-selling car in America? Maybe it's the reliability. Maybe it's the value. Maybe it's the interior. Our team project was tough. The deadline was tougher. Only one digital color printer prints in black and white and color at the same time to save time. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. Our spring fashions are terrific. Now let's get them noticed. Highlight your news with Xerox color and you'll get everyone's attention faster. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. Before winter hits hard, get to Sears, America's number one tire store. For a limited time, all Goodyear tires and all Bridgestone road handlers are on sale at Sears. All weather Goodyear Arribas, as low as 1988, our lowest price ever. Backed by a 55,000 mile warranty, all Goodyear tires and all Bridgestone road handlers on sale. You can count on me. At America's number one tire store, Sears. The top names in women's tennis have taken center court for their $3 million season finale. Acura presents the Virginia Slims Championships live tomorrow on ABC Sports. Well, the Apple Cup, the series records 54, 24, and 6. The last meeting in uh, 91. Washington, of course, the winner last year, 56, 21. They've won the last two years by a total of 80 points. The year before, 55 to 10. And the scoring drive there, nine plays, 80 yards, 325. Shambay right there, the uh, three-yard touchdown run. And then they had the penalty on the extra point, got a yard closer. Maybe the thought to go for two there. They went for the extra point. It was missed. And now Napoleon Kaufman and Jay Berry are back deep for the Huskies as Aaron tries to kick it off. And he tries to get it up into the air against the wind. And it's one of those big up men, number 52, Jim Novell, the center. And, hey, he's got good hands. He snaps it all the time. He knows what to do with the football. And right now, he feels like a halfback or a fullback. ABC's College Football is brought to you by Honda, celebrating its 10th anniversary of automotive production in the United States. By Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice to help keep your teeth tartar-free. By UPS, for reliable, on-time delivery throughout Europe and around the world, you can trust UPS. And by GTE. Roger Twabell, Lynn Swan here with you in uh, Pullman, Washington. And I want to tell you, they may not be 40,000 here, but they're about 35. Close to a sellout. As Mark Brunel and the Washington Huskies take a first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Now, Brunel checking off at the line of scrimmage, but they're going to run out of time. Does he get it off? As they give it right up the middle. Barely got that playoff and the quarterback for the Huskies. Moving into the starting role earlier this year and being quite successful, Mark Brunel. You see what he's done over 3,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, good speed. 
And our diehard starting lineup for the Huskies, Kaufman and Jones in the backfield. Krolik, Mack, and Bruner. The wide receivers and tight end. Up front, the great one, Lincoln Kennedy, Andrew Peterson, Nabel Garcia, and Gallagher. Second down and seven. From the 43-yard line, fumbled by Brunel, and he's able to get it back at the original line of scrimmage, the 40-yard line. There's a penalty marker. Yeah, a penalty marker has been thrown. Now, there was some action away from the football. A couple I, of players had to be separated. I think that was Mobley. I'm not sure who came in. And he nailed Matt Jones, number 22, on the block. And someone came over, upset that he was hit. I don't know if the officials called the flag because, threw the flag, because they felt that the initial hit was late or just to stop the action. Personal foul against Washington State, so there was a personal foul earlier on the second play of the game against Washington that really helped in the Cougars' drive for that first touchdown. And Mike Price, in a sense, looking for his first win against the Huskies, 0-3 so far, as a much improved Washington State defense this year with Bush, Hall, Ford, and Patterson. Up front, Childs, McClanahan, and Lurcher, the backers. And in the secondary, at the beginning of the year, they called them the Young and Wrestles. These guys are really playing terrific now. Hunter Burns, the second leading interception man of the Pac-10. Singor Mobley and free safety John Rushing. Lynn, does this weather favor either team? Well, I, I, I would have thought coming into the game it would favor the Huskies because as they've seen them do in their first plays of this drive, They've come in with two tight ends. They've got an offensive line that can drive you back. Lincoln Kennedy, the All-American, heading it up. And they've got two running backs in the backfield to share that responsibility and drive you. But Washington State's proving that you can move the ball still in the air. Bledsoe driving his team down the field, coming up with a couple of key passes. Well, there's some real confusion here on the sideline. Now, they, they started to step off the penalty, and they've left the ball at the 40-yard line. But they moved the chains. We're, we're, we'll try to get this. Now, they said the penalty was against Washington State. We'll get this ironed out as Brunel will pitch it back. The ball carrier is Napoleon Kaufman. And right now, let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Fresno State and San Diego State. San Diego State and the Aztecs need the win to clinch the whack. And Ray Peterson fields the punt. That is nine, and then it's off to the races. 91 yards. He gets it to the end zone for the touchdown to make it 14-7. Marshall Falk also has a touchdown run in this game. Roger. Uh, thanks, John. Eat your heart out down there in San Diego. You could be up here where it's, uh, it's really northern exposure, isn't it? Second down and 20 from the 45-yard line. The pass and completed the reception by Damon Berry, number 21, and he is driven out at the 44-yard line of Washington State by Anthony McClanahan. Now, there were, apparently, to clarify that penalty situation, the first personal foul was a live play, and then there was another personal foul, which was a dead ball. And so, what I can tell you for sure, folks, it's third and 10 from the 44-yard line. That's where we're at. Yeah, but the interesting, if Roger, I, they, I they move the yard markers down, but they never move Washington back, the Huskies back. Third and 10, the Huskies, nearly 36% on third down conversions this year as Brunel wants to throw, and the pass is overthrown. I'll tell you, that official on the far side looked like he was reaching to his back pocket. Well, the reason why is because Hunter's coming up to make the stop. It's going to be pass interference. He tries to hold himself back. Now watch these two right here at the top of the screen. Now watch him move up. He's slipping. He pulls himself back. But the ball sails over his head, so he wouldn't have caught the ball anyway, so it's no pass interference. Good play by Torrey Hunter, number 24, as John Wardell is in to punt for the Huskies. And Torrey Hunter, 24, he is back on the 10-yard line. Bruce Bailey is the snapper. Wardell averaging 38 and a half yards of punt. Kind of down for him this year. Last year, much better. And he angles it to the near sideline. That's a good-looking kick, and it just barely gets into the end zone. 
Uh, we'll have some highlight shots today here. 56 yards on the punt. Only Delta gives you more flights from over here to over there. Only Delta flies you nonstop to more cities from over here to over there. In fact, only Delta flies you nonstop to more cities in Europe than all these airlines combined. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows the world over. There is an old woman who lives in a shoe. She plays electronic games when her work is through. Little Miss Muffet makes curds and whey with her mini food processor most every day. Jack is nimble, Jack is quick, he flies choppers over the candlestick. Goldilocks, with eyes so bright, says Smart Pear teaches me just right. The three little pigs started a band, their rap mic makes the music brand. For hundreds of toys and so much more, shop Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. is the new Civic Coupe from Honda. Maybe you'd like to take a second look. In the 81st meeting between these two teams in 1988, Washington State found themselves down in the fourth quarter, but this blocked punt by Sean Landrum put the Cougars in a goal line situation. And then quarterback Tim Rosenbaugh from six yards out put the Cougars ahead for good. Their last win in this series was here in Pullman. And Mike Price looking for his first win since taking over as head coach here at Washington State against the University of Washington. Bledsoe, three of four, 41 yards, has it first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Chambay right there up the middle. John Bay with a gain of about five. He's a six foot, 220 pound senior from Seaside, California, uh, who has got a lot of potential. He has quietly worked his way up to a thousand yard rusher. And Lenny's had six 100 yard games this year. And you think about Washington State being a passing team, but actually they, they run it 51% of the time. They throw it 49%. And when they run it, he's the guy that runs it. Well, he's usually the only back there, one back set, taking advantage of what the passing game is setting up. He's run inside extraordinarily well in 1992. Bledsoe, downfield, Brett Carroll in the intended receiver, and Bailey 23 on the coverage as Drew Bledsoe. The question being asked, uh, Lynn, is this his last college football game? A lot of talk about many pro teams, in particular Tampa Bay, would like to get this young man. Well, I don't know exactly who's going to get him or who'd like to get him if they can make all the trades up to be in that position, but he is certainly, I think, the finest quarterback in college football today. I've seen him on tape, saw him last year. He throws off balance, he's accurate, he gives his receivers great opportunities to get the ball, at the same time, keeping it away from the defense. Third and six from the 24-yard line. Washington State two of two on third down, and that was a timing pattern there, and it looked like C.J. Davis got tied up by Josh Moore. Dave Hoffman putting a lot of pressure that time on Bledsoe. There's a look at Hoffman, 54, senior from San Jose, up for many postseason honors. Well, made his first All-American team. It was announced today. Look at the pressure here on Bledsoe. He gets the ball up. Looks like it slips out of his arm a little bit. He doesn't get the full extension on it. But his receiver wasn't there anyway. Steve Johnson back to punt. He's had three punts blocked this season. He's last in the Pac-10 in punting, 38.2. He's punting into the wind from his own 10-yard line. That's a beautiful kick right there. Beautiful kick by Johnston. Down to the 10-yard line. 66 yards, two yards shy of a season and career long. And that was a huge punt. Accord designed to improve airflow, but cash flow as well.
Introducing the Accord Lease Program. See your nearest dealer for details. Make it clear. Make it colorful. Make it both. The Desk Jet 550C. With Desk Jet printers from Hewlett Packard, it's easy to make it happen. What do you smell? I can't smell anything. My nose is clogged. Yeah. For fast relief, try Dristan 12 hour nasal spray. Now smell. It's an orange. Dristan nasal spray just works incredibly fast. Dristan, the face of relief today. When your home is damaged, State Farm is there, fast. You see, when you have a homeowner's insurance claim with State Farm, you report it to your agent. And right away, we team up with State Farm claims people. We work with your agent to avoid needless hassles and delays so you can get your home back together as soon as possible. Our teamwork speeds your claim. It's another reason why State Farm is such an outstanding homeowner's insurance value. State Farm is there. Well, the kicking game is so important. You saw Johnson now officially 65 yards uh, on that punt into the wind. And a lot of pressure on the kickers and punters today. Mike Price said he was very concerned about his kicking game because his punter was not doing anything extraordinary. And first thing out of the box, he has a chance to punt 66 yards. First and 10, they've spotted it at the 11-yard line. They'll give it to the deep back, Napoleon Kaufman, the sophomore from Lompoc, California. And he gets close to a first down and had a chance to talk to Mike Price about the Cougars' role as a perennial underdog in the series. Normally, going into this game, there's a lot of real hype. Our guys are very hyped. We have to do something special to beat Washington. You know, we got to have a superb effort. Um, we, we're not taking that approach this year. We're going to get excited, and we're going to be enthusiastic, and we're going to have fun before the game and during the game. But we feel like if we just play our regular good game, we play up to our potential, that we can compete with this football team. We don't have to do anything extra. That's the point that uh, Mike Price was driving home to his team all week. You're just as good as these guys. We can compete with them. We don't need all that extra hoopla. That was a uh, first and 10 uh, call to Napoleon Kaufman, who has now passed the 1,000-yard mark. He's got 1,020 yards now, and this is sophomore season. And keep in mind, Bino Bryant, who has missed uh, all year because of a hamstring, is going to be redshirted this year, so he will be back next year. So they will be loaded at running back. Second and seven from the 25-yard line. Brunel just sort of heaves the ball over to the far side. Brunel with the, uh, with the cold fingers and... Interesting uh, pass right there. You see number 48, Lewis Bush, coming from the outside. Gets that ball away. But watch him look at his hand. The ball is hard when it gets cold like this. Hard to grip, hard to throw. The air inside compresses, doesn't travel as well. You get in that situation, you snap a pass, and your fingers come off of it. The laces sometimes make your hand feel like it's burning. Third down and three, Jason Shelley made that last reception for Washington. A lot of pressure. Brunel showing his scrambling ability on the run. And he'll be very close to the first down marker. He'll be very close to the first down marker. Giving pursuit was Dwayne Patterson, a six foot one, 248 pound sophomore from Oakland, California, as Brunel shows you some of that great speed that he possesses. Well, one of the difficulties for any defense is this kind of situation. A quarterback who is mobile, getting away, creating all kinds of problems for the defense and how to react to him. And the whole time he's scrambling, his head's up, looking for someone to throw to. He was short of the first down marker. He was run out at about the 30-yard line. Brunel, of course, being talked to on the sideline. After that play is John Wardell. We'll step back at the 15 and Torrey Hunter, number 24, trying to get some footing. Uh, Wardell with the wind to his back. And that's an end-over-end -end punt that Hunter is going to make a mistake and let roll. And look at this thing, folks. That's at the five-yard line. Boy, big mistake there by Torrey Hunter. So when both punters are doing well, it's a return people. 
now making bad decisions, costing the Cougars field position. 65 yards on the punt. Folks want to remind you, a lot of college football upcoming here on Thanksgiving Day. It'll be Auburn against second-ranked Alabama at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific time on ABC Sports. And then the next day on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving in the Big 8, Nebraska and Oklahoma from Norman, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific time. So Washington State back in a hold. First and 10, the ball. They mark it at the six-yard line. Sean Bay right fair. Still on his feet. Nice job of running. Up to the 14-yard line. Gain of about eight for Sean Bay, who's come into this game rushing for over a thousand yards number 75 tackle Michael Bailey watch him just take the man to the outside right there driving him created a big hole that was Andy Mason number 13 he just drove to the outside and right there takes advantage of it six carries 34 yards for Sean Bay second down and two CJ Davis is the man in motion 534 to go first quarter for Pullman as they pull the offside tackle and guard in a big hole for Sean Bay right there and a first down up to the 25 yard line. Terrific job that time by the Washington State offensive line a pickup of 11. Consistently throughout this season people have challenged this Husky defense right up the middle and you can see why they're blowing people away. They've got some good people on that defensive line in terms of DeMarco Farr playing nose guard. Fontaine and Hoffman that's Steve Hoffman brother of the All-American linebacker Dave Hoffman and they just aren't strong enough to stop people from running through them. first and 10 from the 25 that's a dangerous pass Lennon and talk a little bit about we saw earlier you know Josh Moore nearly intercept that pass but Washington State likes to throw to the sides an awful lot they like to throw to the sides but again this is the kind of day we're throwing the out patterns aren't going to be good because out patterns are lateral. They're moving from side to side. A lot of room in between. You can't make the cut to come back to the football if it's short. You have to run vertically straight down the field, make a cut or make the stop, then be able to come straight back to the football. Bledsoe has missed his last four passes. Trips to the far side on second and 10. Hoffman showing blitz. A lot of movement inside. As they give it to Sean Bay right fair, penalty markers down. As Sean Bay gets close to the first down at the 35-yard line, about two yards shy, Dave Hoffman, 54, and Sean Palakoa, 21, were in there, and the holding call is going to go against Washington State. Mike Price, his team got off to a 6-0 start. They've lost three of their last four by a score of 105-41, to and Lynn, they have struggled both offensively and defensively in these last four games. Well, you can you can understand why they're struggling a bit offensively because they're going up against stronger opponents here in the second half of their season. And the defenses in the Pac-10 are, are very, very strong. Causing those problems, not just internally exploding. Second down and 20 after the penalty. They'll give it to Sean Bay right there. Just a very basic play, not much there. Jamal Fontaine, a junior from San Francisco, 6'3 and 230. One of the players in on this very quick and active Washington defense. This is a defense, Lynn, that a lot of people around the country have uh, modeled their defense after, where you rely on speed first. Well, they have a very quick defensive unit. They try and get about eight men up on that line of scrimmage, stopping the run. The linebackers are the strongest part of their defense, trying to support the young people in the down line position. Third down and 18, Bledsoe never saw him, never saw Andy Mason, the junior. Bottom of your screen, watch number 13, Andy Mason. Lines up, it's a good move, just not being handled at all by Clarence Williams, number 98. Clarence lets him get inside and fails to drive him far enough inside. He had a great angle on Bledsoe. Eighth sack of the year for Andy Mason from Longview, Washington. And now Steve Johnston will be standing back in his end zone with 4.13 to go first quarter. Washington State leads it six to nothing. And Napoleon Kaufman 
And Bailey are back at midfield to receive the punt. A low line drive kick. And Bailey has it, and he's tripped up. Bailey is tripped up at about the 40-yard line by Eric Thompson. And just 34 yards on that punt. And, of course, today, the big rivalries in the Pac-10. The game, Stanford and California. The Cardinal leads at 6-3. to three. Then USC and UCLA. Arizona, Arizona State will be tonight in the Civil War just underway between Oregon and Oregon State. And, of course, the uh, 10th anniversary of that, the play in the game, Stanford Cal. Now, Washington, the longest lateral series of laterals in history. They pull out the right guard and the right tackle, and Kaufman is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. This is a defense of Washington State's that maybe Lynn is the most improved in the conference, if maybe not in the country this year. Well, you look at the defensive line. They're attacking aggressively. Some big people for Washington pulling out. But look at them just filling the hole, reading the play, cutting inside the lead blockers, making the stop. And it's a young football team, Ro team Roger defensive team. Yeah. Four sophomores in that secondary, only two seniors starting on this defensive unit. Six sophomores, three juniors with those two seniors on second and 11 as Brunel will roll out and throws it behind the back of his intended receiver, Darius Turner, a senior from Gardena, California. On the coverage, Kurt Lurcher. One of the points that I was just about to make when I talked about the Washington State defense. Last year, they allowed 229 yards rushing per game. They have knocked over 100 yards off that this year, allowing just 125. They're 21st in the nation in rushing defense. And I guess the knock, uh, maybe for the last decade on Washington State, great offense, no defense. That's not the case this year. Third down and 11. Brunel escapes the trouble. He's got a man wide open. Damon Berry has got the first down, and Mark Brunel created that play with his athletic ability to get out of trouble, and then his receiver, Berry, was wide open. I don't know, Roger. It seemed like a little magic to me, a little, a little Houdini. I mean, he is in the pocket, folks, and he is surrounded by red jerseys, and they're about to come in. And watch. They're all up in the air. He fakes a throw. Gets number 92, Ray Hall, up in the air, and he escapes and gets a ball to his receiver for a first down. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. First back through, number 31, Darius Turner, who is coming back after some injury problems. One of the strongest players on the team, a 6-foot, 235-pounder, came into this game averaging five yards a carry. They're happy to have him back because Matt Jones, a junior from Portland, Oregon, also gives them some good plays. They're very solid at that fullback position. You see the clock running down to the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. Second down and eight as they pitch it back to Kaufman. He eludes several tackles and finally driven out of bounds at the 20-yard line by Singor Mobley. A sophomore from Tacoma who a couple years ago was uh, probably the most highly recruited player in the state of Washington. Terrific athlete, very, very physical, six feet, 180 pounds. Was Kansas. an offensive player, wasn't he, Lynn? They, they created it, talked him into being a defensive player. <laughs> That's some fast how, talking. How do you do that, huh? <laughs> That's some fast talking. Third down and three. The Huskies, one of three in third down situations as they send their wide receivers, Barry and Matt to the far side. Draw play, the tackle made, and it's gonna be very close to the first down as John Rushing, the free safety, came up to greet Napoleon Kaufman. Kaufman's just five feet nine, 170 pounds, from Lompoc, California. I guarantee you, Lynn, he's never played in conditions like this before. <laughs> Roger. As I said earlier, they're going to rely on Kennedy and that line on the right side there. Look at him just blocking, driving his people away from the ball, the line of scrimmage, opening up the holes on a critical third down situation. Kennedy, so big, he was named head after two presidents, right? Yeah, two performing arts centers. There you go, too. 
Off the left side on first down, not much there for Jay Berry, the senior from North Glen, Colorado, Brian Ford, number 69, came up to meet him. Lincoln Kennedy is uh, one of the uh, Washington players who was named to an All-American team uh, today. Of course, there are so many different All-American teams, but he's in line for the real big awards for the offensive defensive line. I'm, I'm certain he will be a consensus, if not a unanimous All-American. He's performed well year in and year out, coming into his senior year. He's the real deal. 6'7", 325, quick feet, good athlete. Has allowed just one sack this year, and that's on a play he slipped on. on against Pacific, and yeah. he was set. Exactly. And shouldn't have played, but they threw him in there. Second and eight from the 13. Penalty markers all over the place as Darius Turner takes it off the left side. Actually, in his entire career, he's only had two people get to the quarterback over him. You see the holding call against Washington. You know, one was against Oregon. One of the problems on a, a slippery day, Lynn, for the offensive line, as you look here, you start to fire out and you, you lose your feet and you start to grab onto the defensive players. Not really on purpose, but, you know, just sort of oh, yeah. on a play like that, you're not trying to hold anybody. You can have great position as a lineman blocking on a defensive person. You've got them stood up. But if he's still driving and you're trying to plant to keep maintain that leverage, your foot just slips away from you, so you can just be slid back. So sometimes you reach up and you hold. This is the kind of day where you're going to have to make contact and then maybe time it, go down low and cut the guy mm -hmm. to make sure he can't continue on. Mark Brunel, who has been most effective since moving back into the starting quarterback role, he's accounted for 11 touchdowns, five touchdown passes, and as a matter of fact, has thrown for over 200 yards in his uh, last two games against Arizona and Oregon State. Had never thrown for 200 yards before. And you see Washington, they have really done a good job in the first quarter, but they've got about 40 seconds to go here as Brunel will take it on the option. Finds a bit of a scene, but right there was Lewis Bush, 48, the senior from Tacoma. Good quickness on the outside for Washington State with Dwayne Patterson and Lewis Bush. They really cover the field laterally as well as any team in the Pac-10. But this option play, that quick option play, will be very difficult for Washington State to stop consistently if they're caught in man-to-man -man coverage. They were in man-to-man -man coverage that time. Brunel was able to get back to the opposite side, cut up field, and that's a win for the offense. Ninth play of this drive, third down and two from the seven-yard line. They give it to Kaufman. He dives. He'll be close to the first down at the five-yard line. You see the Huskies running the ball well on the inside coming into this game, and especially under these weather conditions, it's one of the things that they wanted to accomplish, to control the game offensively by running the football, possessing the, the ball so that the clock works in their favor, and keeping Bledsoe with his arm off the field. Don James, 13 and four against Washington State. He got the first down, and we've completed the first 15 minutes from Pullman. Washington State leads Washington 6-0. Well, we've got It seems Europeans have a passion for certain things, American. And one of them happens to be the reliable, efficient delivery of a certain American delivery company, UPS. Fact is, we've built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So next time you need something shipped there, use the outfit Europeans find, well, so fashionable. UPS, we run the tightest ship in Europe. Six months ago, my dentist says to me, Mike, you got a tartar problem. Get tartar control crest. But doctor, I said, I got toothpaste is toothpaste. He sticks that pick in my mouth, he says. Think again. You'll have significantly less tartar at your next visit if you use Crest's unique tartar fighting formula for six months. We're so sure, we'll give you a money-back guarantee. So I started using Crest every day. And you were looking at a happy guy. A very happy guy. Tartar Control Crest. Less tartar in six months guaranteed. Introducing the 190 horsepower Prelude VTEC. It's very quick. No matter how you look at it. We're going to color the way you think about sales during the Dockers Week sale at JCPenney. Save on Berry, Olive, 
teal and wine, birch, blue jay, cinder, and pine. Save on colors that follow one after another and colors that fall right next to each other. It's Dockers Week at JCPenney, where you'll save on all pants and all shirts in all shades. A sale so colorful, other sales pale by comparison. I welcome you back here to Martin Stadium where the lights are on in Pullman, Washington, where it has been uh, snowing and blowing since about 9 a.m. Pacific time. Snow accumulation is supposed to be 8 to 10 inches today. Along with uh, Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twaddle. We're set to go. The second quarter here of the Huskies at the University of Washington have a first and goal from the five-yard line. Darius Turner, Napoleon Kaufman. The setbacks as they give it to Kaufman. He bounces to the outside, but pulled down. I'll tell you what, a real good play made by Chad Eaton, number 90. The sophomore who was able to just grab a piece of his jersey to pull him down from behind. Eaton's a young man they think very highly of, 6'5", 275. Feel that he is going to be a terrific player for them before his career is over here in Pullman. Just in case you want to know, Lynn, Chad Everett Eaton. Second and goal from the four. They give it right up the middle to Turner as he fights down to about the one yard line. And once again, Chad Eaton, number 90. And there's a penalty marker down. I believe they're going to call that against Kurt Lurcher, number 19. Looked like he flung someone to the side. Yeah, they call it a face mask. You know, penalties have really killed Washington State this year. Uh, look, these last three losses in four games, it's either been a dropped pass, it's been a penalty. They've really beaten themselves more than the other teams uh, have beat them. Southern Cal game, for example, they were inside the 10 twice, came away with nothing. The USA was not playing a great game. There were plenty of opportunities, and Price said, you know, the best teams take advantage of other people's mistakes. So something Washington State hasn't done this year. First and goal from the one, they'll give it to Turner. He is stuck. He is stuck. Busting through there, McClanahan 41 and Ron Childs 31. McClanahan, tough player, inside linebacker, number 41. You see him coming over the top. Everybody. Now watch the line. Look at the charge they get. They make the first contact. They beat Washington to the punch on the play, and that's why they get the penetration. This is a Washington State defense that limited Arizona to 58 yards rushing in their win earlier this year. Second and goal from the two. Brunel wanted to pitch it. He's going to go for the marker. He got it. Touchdown. Mark Brunel. With his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. 13th play of this drive. There was a moment of indecision there by Brunel whether to pitch it back or to keep it. I don't think so, Roger. I think it's designed. I think he's just going back. He's faking the pitch. All you're doing is getting an extra blocker out there. And one man carrying the ball, that means you got one more man blocking for you that the defense can't account for. And he stays behind it. It's a great play. He fakes it. Everybody carries it out just like it's going to be a pitch. Oh, Kaufman. He, he's in, he's in, intending to carry the ball from, be, from the beginning of that play. Kaufman with a big block there is Travis Hansen to attempt the point after. And he is perfect on the year. 36 of 36 in the Huskies. Take a one-point lead. It has four independent motors, an intricate steel frame, even an electronically regulated temperature control system. And that's just the driver's seat. The Lexus ES300 luxury sedan. Norelco doesn't just shave close, but incredibly close or merely shaven comfort, but exceptional comfort. 
because inside Norelco's floating heads, our lift and cut system lifts the hair so when it's cut, it can drop below skin level without the blades touching your face. And once you've shaved that close and comfortable, you know you'll always be comfortable shaving with Norelco. Norelco, we make close comfortable. When the Rutledge family needs auto, home, life, or health insurance, they see me. I'm their State Farm agent, Billy King. They keep seeing me as I help them keep their coverages up to date with our State Farm family insurance checkup. When they have a claim, they see me. And thanks to our checkups, the protection has been there. If you want to see a family insurance agent working for you, see a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, search for you to Undefeated Alabama puts its national title hopes on the line when they tackle Auburn. It's a classic SEC showdown Thanksgiving Day on ABC's College Football. 13 plays, 40 yards, 5 minutes and 29 seconds. And Brunel with the one-yard touchdown run. And the point after by Hanson. Washington leads Washington State. 7 to 6 as Hanson will kick it off. And he hits a low line drive kick with Pointer. Will take it the five yard line and tiptoes his way across the 20 to the 23 yard line. And uh, let's look at those numbers after quarter number one here in Pullman. Well, they're very even when you take a look at them 70 yards, 83. Washington State with a slight edge, having that wonderful opening drive, getting on the board, but missing the extra point. So they come over at six. But well, Washington accomplishing what its game plan calls for in terms of eight minutes and 13 seconds, already establishing control of the floor of this game with their offense. Bobo and Davis come split to the near side on first and ten from the 24-yard line. Cougars in those crimson uniforms which they wore against UCLA when they won their sixth consecutive game to start off the year. Bledsoe checking off at the line of scrimmage. Quick three-step drop and he's got his man C.J. Davis. That's a first down. Up near the 40-yard line, they'll down it at the 38. The Washington State Cougars came into this game wanting to put people in motion, shifting a lot to try and force the defense of the Huskies into some kind of mistake. Keep in mind what happened at last play. The Husky, Huskies never moved. I think what they're trying to do is play a base defense, let Washington State shift around, then just play it conservative and straight. They move some people around, getting Shambe right fair back as the lone setback on first and 10 from the 38-yard line. They pull out the right tackle and right guard, and Shambe right fair a gain of about three. That time, once again, Pimiskern and Triple, the right guard and right tackle respectively, pulled out, made some room. Dave Hoffman, 54, and James Clifford, 53. Uh, the backers in on the tackle, and between those two players, 160 tackles on the year. And that'll present a second down and seven from the 40-yard line for Drew Bledsoe. That's Butch Williams, 98, shifts to the far side. They'll run right, and there is no going there for Sean Bay right fair. Andy Mason, 13. Is he tough? Look at it. Hey, Lynn, short sleeve, short jersey. Does he get the Tough Guy Award today in this weather? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Right now, it's just a show. But what he shows you on this play is his speed. Number 13, coming up the ball to the outside. They read this play all the way. He just stays on his feet. As Sean Bay right there was looking for some space to bounce it to the outside. Mason turned down a $65,000 signing bonus with the Toronto Blue Jays. Concentrate on football at the University of Washington. On a third down and 11, with 11.30 left to go, first half. Oh, bad pass right there by Drew Bledsoe. And it went right into the arms of Lewis Jones, the rover back, who's taking the place of Tommy Smith, the usual starter, who is uh, sitting out a one-game suspension for missing class time at the University of Washington. But ill-advised pass there. Well, number two, Philip Bobo is the guy that they're looking for. But as you see this ball coming in the air, he is on his knees as he slips and falls down in that snow. Plus, there's three defensive guys there. And, and Washington State, once again, was in a third and 11 situation, and that's the thing they try to avoid at all costs, but not able to. And Steve Johnson standing back 
at around the 21 yard line. He has the wind to his back this time and he hits a line drive kick and it's going to bounce too far. Johnston with the punt of 64 yards. It seems that most car rental companies go out of their way to confuse you with unpredictable rates. They're all over the place. Thrifty, on the other hand, never veers off course. To keep your rates low, we've always kept our costs low. You can use this credit card for Montgomery Ward car rental at participating thrifty locations and at the Auto Express in Montgomery Ward. When it's your money, always call thrifty. I watch your show all the time. My show? Never miss it. Woo, woo, woo. Critics call Passenger 57 spectacular, exciting. Snipes is dynamite. Passenger 57, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Here. There. Everywhere. The Desk Jet Portable. Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. Make it happen. Imagine for a moment a performance car. One with a four cam, 32 valve, 250 horsepower V8. good scoring streak and we have got a pretty good snowstorm going on here in Pullman Washington as you take a look uh, out of the uh, end of the stadium and the basketball Coliseum in the distance over there behind the lights we couldn't see that earlier this morning but the snow still coming down the wind still blowing and first and ten from the 20 yard line for the University of Washington as they hand it to the first back through that's number 31 Darius Turner and Chad Eaton was there to stop him after a gain of about six. And, uh, you know, we talked about uh, the Pac-10 being a good conference, all-around conference this year, but Lynn, especially defensively with not just one, two, three teams, but seven teams ranked in the top 25 in total defense. And that's what Mike Price was talking about in terms of offensive productivity. I'm sure your offensive productivity will go down when your defense is this strong. Seven in the top 25. Pac-10 is 22-7-1 and one against non-conference opponents this year. That's as good as any conference in the country is. A good job there, and this is what Washington State can do defensively. What they did to Jay Berry that time with great lateral speed and pursuit. There was just nowhere for him to turn up, especially on a slippery field like this. Torrey Hunter, number 24, did an excellent job as a corner of staying outside, outside position, making sure that they didn't turn the corner. In, a, in other conditions where it's not snowing, that's a situation where the running back will cut inside. Now look at him. He's outside. He's not making, he's just making sure that they don't get outside of him and they have to come back inside. But with the snow on the field, they can't cut inside, so it's a win for him. Man, sometimes as a corner, you've got to give your body up to make the play, and Hunter did that time. Third down and five. Brunel, the state straight drop back. Now he's going to throw it, and should be enough for the first down. Brunel did find the receiver coming across Eric Bjornsson. A sophomore from Oakland, California, Greg Burns was right there on the coverage. But once again, Brunel keeping things alive with his ability and good peripheral vision to see where those folks are coming from. And that's it. That, that's what's so critical and so dangerous about him on the run. Every coach knows this that's ever played against this young man. When he runs, he's not just taking off to get the yards on the ground. He's still looking for a receiver downfield. See what the Washington defense has done. as Turner goes off the left side. And Darius Turner with a gain of about five or six. Now what you're starting to see here is some movement by the Washington, State, Washington offensive line starting to move the Washington State line back and on that first down play, Lynn, getting five, six yards. Sure, you're gonna see the fullback carry the ball a bit more in a day like today. Darius Turner came into this game with 191 yards and two touchdowns and nine catches. I think he's gonna to add to that rushing total. 
to make sure that all the backs stay fresh. Uh, he can hit the line very quickly. He's not looking necessarily to break a big one, but he's looking to get to the line in an explosive fashion behind some good blocking to pick up that quick four, five, six yards on first and second down. 10-12 to go, first half. And must have been a penalty. We didn't see a flag go down, but it's first and five now at the 38-yard line. Offsides. Offsides that time against Washington State. Once again, first man through is Turner, and he is still battling, and he has a first down. Darius Turner, the fullbacks, the kickers, they play important roles today because those fullbacks are used to just getting the ball and running straight ahead, not giving you all those moves that a tailback would. Look at this from the end zone, Roger. The fullback's going to get the ball, and the hole is just going to open up real quick right there. You see it? Boom. And he's going to take advantage of it, go right through it, before anybody on defense can adjust. He stays up, they're trying to pull him down, and he just drives, 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 picking up the extra yardage. First and 10, 45-yard line. The Huskies have a drive working once again. They lead it seven to six, and this time the second back through, that's Jay Berry, and he's met by John Rushing, the free safety from Merced, California. Rushing came into this game with 70 tackles. And this is a young secondary. All of the starters for Washington State University are sophomores. And Mike Zimmer, their defensive coordinator, told me that they've nominated all four of those guys for postseason honors in the Pac-10. They've played aggressive. They've played solid football. They've hung in there together. They're just laying a strong foundation for 1993. 14th in the nation in pass efficiency defense, having picked off 14 passes and allowed just nine touchdowns. And they tried to run it up the middle that time and nothing going. Ron Childs, 31, the sophomore from Kennewick, and Anthony McClanahan, number 41, and he's an interesting story, McClanahan, 120 tackles this year, second in the Pac-10. Very active player. Last year he led them with 144 tackles, and uh, Anthony, the, uh, the son of former Minnesota Viking and Arizona State player, Brent, McClanahan. Third down and eight. At the 47 yard line. Play action. Brunel will come near side. He's got a lot of room to run, but he's got his man wide open down the sideline. Look at him slipping and sliding. Joe Krolik was wide open, and he looked up for the football. Greg Burns was about 10 yards behind him, and he slipped. That play had a little bit of everything in it. Offensive lineman with a takedown of a defensive lineman. All right, but then look at the receiver, how open he is right here. But he slips because the ball just hangs up in the air. Again, the ball in this weather condition, because it's so cold, doesn't travel as far when it's in the air. <laughs> look at the receiver right there. Kralik trying to come back for it. He just can't keep his footing. There's Kralik, number nine. You know, Brunel had plenty of room to run that time if he wanted to take it. He had 10 or 15 yards in front of him as John Wardell, who had a career-high 65-yard punt in his last one, will kick it down to Torrey Hunter, and that's into the wind. Look at that thing. That looked like a hook with, a, with about a, a five iron in golf. I mean, it just, that thing went up and then went immediately left. <laughs> a big hook, not a, a big, draw. No, a big <laughs> hook. Timeout, 7.58 to go first half. A raindrop may reach the 1993 Lexus LS400. Getting inside is another matter. An improved side rail weather stripping channels more water away from open doors and windows. So while you make your journey in comfort, the raindrop makes its in vain. The 1993 LS400. The pursuit continues. There's a special quality about the professors at Washington State University. They're at WSU because they care about teaching and about students learning in and out of the classroom. They know the joys of discovery and the importance of putting knowledge to work, imparting it to the world through their students. It's a little different, maybe a little better. Washington State University, it really is something special. 
In 1956, a medical team from the University of Washington pioneered open-heart surgery in the Northwest. Recently, Gordon Oakes and his daughter Terry entered the University of Washington Medical Center, each suffering from terminal heart disease. Within days, both father and daughter received heart transplants. Medical history continues to be written at the University of Washington. Well, as we speak, we're having a little taste of Washington. We've got the hot apple cider up here in the, uh, the booth as uh, we return with 7.58 left to go first half on a cold, snowy, blustery day on the Palouse here in Pullman, Washington. The Cougars have it first and 10 from the 36-yard line. Bledsoe throwing it down the middle, underthrown the intended receiver, C.J. Davis. And I uh, want to remind you, coming up on ABC's Monday Night Football, the Washington Redskins and the New Orleans Saints. The Redskins have started to struggle here in recent weeks, and of course they got a former Cougar named Mark Rippon to play quarterback for him. Meanwhile, the Saints go along pretty good. Uh, they're going to be inside down there at the Superdome in New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that why they schedule the Monday Night Crew I down there? So. This time I think of the year? so. Second and ten. They're not quite as tough as us. No, no. Man, we love it outdoors. <laughs> we love it up here. What so? Over to the far side, and yeah, they're going to call it a reception there. Reception was made by C.J. Davis, the second leading receiver in the Pac-10. Came into this game with uh, 48 catches for nearly 800 yards. And, of course, C.J. is one of only two players for the Cougars who have beaten the Huskies. Tough situation to be in. The ball is very low. He gets down. Got to be cautious about a game like this. It's cold. Players won't drink water, Roger. Yep. They could get dehydrated and cramp up. Muscles are cold. Bend over like that, you could pull. Third down and four as Shambe Wright Fair goes in motion to the far side. Bledsoe down the middle, and the catch made by Brett Carolyn. The tight end, Brett Carolyn, the most sure handed receiver on this Cougars football team. Lewis Jones makes the tackle, and a good pickup right there for the Cougars of Washington State. And a first down. 6'4", 244. Excellent hands, good speed. They come up with a crossing pattern. Right here, he should be trying to figure a way out to turn it upfield, but the footing's just not there for him. 16 yards on the reception. Uh, Brett's dad, Reg Carroll, the tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs in their Super Bowl years back in the late 60s. Driving up the middle that time, and a good gain. Shambay right there. Jamal Fontaine made the tackle, and Shambay is saying, "Get Derek Sparks in here for a second. I got to come over to the sideline and get squared away." It looks like he's limping a little bit, Roger, as he went off the field. Shambay, 11 carries, 54 yards. Gain of eight on that play as Sparks comes in motion to the near side on second and two with 6.10 to go. First half and wide open right there. Philip Bobo, the ball thrown a little bit behind him, but more than enough for the first down. Philip Bobo just getting out, leaking out to the sideline and a little slant play. Pressure coming on the quarterback. Bledsoe does an excellent job of reading it. That's Hoffman. 54 coming in on the blitz, but he is way late, but the ball is already thrown and completed. Bobo's now caught a pass in 28 consecutive games for the Cougars. From the 28, first and 10, Bledsoe looking down to Sheck Snyder. Dropped it. Right in his hands, and he dropped it. And this is the type of play that Washington State has not been able to finish off in the last month. Talked about big plays. This is an opportunity for him. Watch him as he gets outside. But it's great touch here by Bledsoe. He li lifts it up in the air. That's going to drop right into his hands. He should make that catch every time. Perfectly thrown ball here. Perfect example of why Bledsoe could be the number one player chosen in the draft should he decide to go. Schechnader has got to be disappointed with himself. Well, they had a long one drop by C.J. Davis against Stanford last week early in the game, which really proved to be critical later on, took all their momentum away. Second down and 10 from the 28, they'll run it. 
Derek Sparks, a sophomore from Santa Ana, California. We'll get about three before Jaime Fields, number three, and Shane Pawakoa, number 21, the senior from Marysville, Washington, make the tackle. There's a look at Pawakoa right there, 6'3 and 202 pounder, 53 tackles coming into this game. His brother Jeff was an All-American offensive tackle for the Huskies drafted by the Rams and uh, got a spot man. Oh, oh there he is. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I thought our spotter Joe Selvin had gotten away for a while. Third and eight, wide open, down the near side. C.J. Davis. Bledsoe was put on his backside by Andy Mason, but the catch, the first down, 17 yards on the field. And Bledsoe should be excited. He's done this time and time again for his team, throwing from his back to watch him. He's going to get pressure. And watch him throwing across his body right in between the zone coverage. That's a hard thing to do with touch. Walter Bailey was the man on the coverage. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Davis in motion. Davis, five receptions, 78 yards. Sean Bay right fair back in there. Sean Bay down to the one-yard line. They said, no, the ball was down. Well, Jaime player. Fields and Dave Hoffman made the tackle. The player was down. The ground can't cause a fumble. Then the ball squeaked out. So far in this ball game, 409 in the second quarter. The ball has come loose a couple of times. But each team has recovered their own fumble. You'll see right there, right here. Watch him go. Try and power into that end zone. But he's down, and the ball just leaks out. Tenth play of this drive. They spotted at the two-yard line. Bledsoe, the quarterback, sneak. Well, I'll tell you, he got at least one. The man that came busted through was Dave Hoffman, also Shane Pawakoa. I got to tell you something. He could have been in. And they wouldn't even know this. They can hardly well, see the line. The Washington players are trying to signal that it's their football. And the officials are going no. You take a look at this play again. He's only got maybe a yard and a half to go. Well, you can't see the line from there. He never really had a good handle on it, then. No, he never had a handle on the football, but I'll tell you, it looked like he could have crossed the goal line, and the officials just may not have seen it. 3.08 left to go, first half. The Huskies lead the Cougars 7-6. to six. They're still talking about it. I don't know if they're talking about the spot. Maybe they're telling the Washington players to settle down just a little bit. At least the officials have stopped the clock while all this is going on. Third down and goal. Sparks. Well, that took a lot of time for that play to develop. It looked like Sean Bay Wright, Fair Bledsoe, and Sparks all sort of ran into each other as Lewis Jones was the man that came up to make the tackle. Tough situation to go outside tackle on. I thought maybe he should have come inside. Lewis Jones, number one, was there. But I thought he stood a better chance of trying to power over him than trying to take it outside. And they're going to try the field goal with Aaron Price on. Now, he missed the extra point. Boone Borden is the holder. 19 yards on the attempt. He has not attempted a field goal this year of this range. But this is like the extra point try. If he had to draw a comparison. And a bad snap up on the shoulder. Borden takes it inside. And the snap by Quinn Magnuson was high and off the shoulder. And once again, Washington State points the pistol at their foot and pulls the trigger. You're right about that, Roger. Look at the snap. He's going to turn to get it. Can't hold on to it. Does the right thing, but no one knows he's coming, so no one was well, well, sustaining a block for him to give him a chance. He doesn't have gloves on. And again, very cold. Well, hands, for the them ball to, hits it, yeah. burns a little bit. 
this is the thing that has really troubled Washington State all year. They've been down there, they've been close, they just haven't been able to finish things off as the handoff goes to Matt Jones up the middle as we've reached the two minute mark here. Now, timeout situation, both teams with three. As the clock continues to run, and I think maybe Washington State would want to call a timeout here. I think they should. If they stop the clock, save as much time as possible. If they can stop Washington, back them up against their own goal line, then get the ball in the exchange, they've got a shot. But right now, they're just letting the clock run down. And, and Washington is going to use as much of the clock as they possibly can if Washington State's not going to stop it. I mean, they're going to, they're down to seven seconds on the uh, play clock. Kaufman. Now let's see, are they calling a timeout? Yeah, there they go, finally now with 114. So essentially they let about 50 seconds go off the clock. And we've got a timeout with the Huskies leading the Cougars 7-6. design a communications network to actually help them run better, do you know what they told us? This is Pioneer Home Theater, with laser disc images 60% sharper than most VCRs, the world's leading AV receivers, speakers customized for home theater, and a big screen picture that's real as life. From the leaders in audio and video. Home theater so advanced, you don't just watch it. Well, Washington with the one-point lead, 114 to go. A lot of people will question why a timeout wasn't taken after that first play. I want to remind you of the Prudential Halftime Report with John Saunders, scores and highlights, and a look at Charlie Ward, the two forts two sports star from Florida State, the football basketball player. With three timeouts left for the Cougars, they could have, the Huskies could have won, run one play, call a timeout immediately. Run the second play, another timeout immediately, and the third play, stopping the clock, using all three of the timeouts in less than the 50 seconds they let run off the clock. Third and nine, 114 to go, first half, and they'll give it to Kaufman. First down. Senor Mobley made the stop in the secondary, and the Huskies have three timeouts remaining after the gain of 13. Well, give the credit to that offensive line. They doubled down on the center there. And a big hole. You saw the red jerseys were there. Several of the red jerseys there for the, for the Cougars, but they're just not in position to make the tackle. Again, maybe the snow having, a, having something to do with that not being able to slide over into the hole the way they normally do. 10 carries, 44 yards for Napoleon Kaufman. First and 10. The clock continues to run. Now, the Huskies have all three of their timeouts, so they're going to take a non-aggressive posture here. Now, finally, time is called by Washington State. Well, that's interesting that, you know, Washington... Strategy, strategy, strategy. We'll be right back. You demand the same things from your car that you demand from your budget. Both have to go more places, last longer, and work harder than ever. So get Walmart savings on the motor oil engineered for today's smaller cars. Castrol GTX. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. And Walmart savings provide maximum protection against paying too much. Walmart. Always the low price. Always. If you want to move ahead in any career, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to work with a team, how to handle responsibility, how to take on a tough job and see it through. You can learn all these things in the Army. So when you do set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat.
Roger Twybell, Lynn Swan back with you in Pullman, Washington. Lynn, I don't know if you can tell this, but those flakes are getting larger out there, pal. Well, they were, <laughs> they were that size earlier today. It was just blowing so hard and you they couldn't were tell. down, then they were a little smaller, and the wind was blowing more, blowing into the players' faces. Now they're getting bigger, and it's still coming down. Second and nine from the 18-yard line, and Brunel will carefully hand it off and going nowhere is Jay Berry because Brian Ford was right there. And now Washington State wants their last time out. I, you know, I, I'm not sure if I totally understand the strategy here, but I want to talk to you, Lynn, about the kicking game on a day like this. When you're faced, not so much the punting, but the place kicking aspect of it. We've seen an extra point missed already by Washington State. We've seen now a attempted field goal gone awry. You can see the wind blowing right there. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, why go for the field well, goal yeah, I mean, instead what, of going for yeah. the touchdown? The only thing I can uh, conceive of is that you go for the field goal because you're trailing by one. It's an opportunity for you to get up on these guys with time running out. You're concerned that your running game is not going to just be able to drive the ball into the end zone. So you go for the field goal. The, the argument against that is, number one, your kicker's already missed the extra point. And as you said, the wind's blowing. Difficult situation. And you get you come up with a situation the snap is bad coming back to him. You never even get, get the chance for the kick. With the running game, if your line gets off aggressively, you got a chance of pulling it in there. But when you're kicking, three good things have to happen. You have to have a good snap, a good hold, and a good kick. And then there's a the possibility that the block, uh, the, the, the fumble picked up and gone the other way. Whereas if you're, you're on the one-yard line, you got a six-foot-five-inch quarterback. And even if you don't make it, you've got them jammed up against the goal line where they could slip and maybe you get a safety. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the second half presented with similar situations. On third and 12, Washington will run it again to Jay Berry. And now Washington State has no timeouts left. And the Huskies will just let the clock run and down I, I, because they have an extra down if they want to use it. I, I they don't have to punt. I don't really understand the, the, the Washington State use of timeouts uh, there. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it kept uh, everybody out in the field for a little while longer, kept all the people from hitting the uh, concession stands and such. Uh, I'm sure some of the folks will be running out to the RVs at halftime to warm up as we've reached halftime in Pullman. The Huskies lead the Cougars 7-6. ABC's College Football, brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, including the newly redesigned 1993 LS400, and by Xerox, the document company. We'll return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We put our best people on the project. Hope they come through. One network color laser printer not only brings everyone together, it brings out the best in Strength of the Rock, the Prudential, Rock Solid. Welcome back to Pullman. We're at halftime. Washington leads Washington State 7-6. to six. Snow's uh, lessening a bit here. And we'll be back for the second half in a moment. Everything we put into the Chevy Lumina. For those who want to drive something really foreign, the Lumina, fully independent sports suspension, anti-lock brakes, fuel-injected V6. For more details and a test drive, see your Chevrolet dealer. Complete condition, great looking here. Head and shoulders, two in one. You get complete conditioners with our proven dandruff shampoo, all in one. For what could be the end of flakes and the beginning of something great. Head and shoulders, two in one. Now save 25% on selected Goodyear all-season radios for cars and light trucks. Save 25% on Invicta GS. Save 25% on Wrangler AT and HT. That's right, save 25%. Where? Goodyear. When? Now. In Europe, things happen on time. Right on schedule. Punctuality is the norm. And that makes Europe the ideal environment for UPS. Fact is... UPS has built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So when you have a shipment going there that has to be on time, use the delivery company whose punctuality is a time-honored tradition. UPS. We run the tightest ship in Europe. Visa salutes American Olympic champions. In 1976, John Neighbor fulfilled a childhood promise by capturing the 100-meter backstroke. 
continued support of amateur athletics. Visa today is proud to donate another $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team to support future Olympic hopefuls in their quest for the gold. Far from Bourbon Street, in its own little corner of the Garden District, is the most fabled house in New Orleans, the Maple Street Children's Bookshop, where the folks who write the books also read them. So if you go, bring your wildest imagination and your visa card. Because at Maple Street, they'll take you on a truly magical journey. But they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. ABC's College Football. Brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. And by U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Welcome back here to Pullman, where the uh, good news is it has gotten a little bit brighter. The uh, snow has let up just a bit, and uh, they've been able to feel the cl uh, clear the field considerably. As we take a look at the highlights, and Lynn, this early in the game, the first drive for Washington State. Josh Moore comes up going for the interception. He tips it, and C.J. Davis... Great concentration to hang on to it, and he takes him down to the five-yard line, which sets up this touchdown by Sean Bay Wright Fair. Excellent blocking up front. And that first drive, first quarter, the offensive line for Washington State really came to play, did an excellent job. 80 yards on that first drive by uh, Washington State, and then the punt by Wardell, and Torrey Hunter makes a bad decision. One of the critical mistakes of the first half. They've been fighting for a field position. They've been doing a good job. He doesn't feel this punt. He could have just jumped on it and covered it, stopped it from rolling all the way back to the five-yard line, led to a touchdown for the Cougars, uh, for the Huskies, as they had good field position. They took the ball on the drive, and it was Mark Brunel behind the bevy of blockers that got the touchdown. And then on a uh, situation where it was fourth and uh, goal from the one, instead of going for it, uh, they attempted the field goal, a bad snap by Magnuson, and Boone Borden couldn't get the handle on it, and consequently they got nothing out of it. And that's where we stand at 7-6 to six right now as we get to go, uh, set to go for the second half, and Washington State chooses to uh, kick off in this second half, and they will have the win to their back to begin the second half with Aaron Pierce, or excuse me, Aaron Price, uh, set to kick it off and back deep Napoleon Kaufman and Jay Berry those two players standing at the 10-yard line and they've been able to do a pretty good job here at halftime of getting a lot of the snow cleared off but it continues to fall and it uh, continues to blow here in Pullman Washington as Price sends it downfield and it's taken by Jay Berry at the 12 and running straight ahead to the 29-yard line where Folkers makes the tackle on the special teams, and the numbers land fairly even. Fairly even, very unspectacular, as you would think, in an afternoon with snow and wind impeding both teams. Surprisingly enough, no turnovers you see there for both teams under these conditions. They've come close to it on fumbles and so forth, uh, but nothing at this point. Washington, first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Brunel, four of seven for 37 yards, and he's going to be able to get outside the pursuit. And a big block right there as he crosses the 40 to the 43-yard line. Huge block by Mark Bruner, the tight end, number 85, to get his quarterback an extra five yards, 14 yards on the pickup as you look at Bruner, the sophomore from Aberdeen, Washington. It's called a naked bootleg, and let me show you how it works. I'm going to draw this for you. Well, I was. The line, you see the line, everybody's blocking down in this direction. So look at the defense. They're all going in this direction. He fakes a pitch here and then sprints to the outside. It's called a naked bootleg, folks, and it worked big time for the Huskies. Running play up the middle by Kaufman. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ron Childs, 31, the first man to hit him. Childs, the sophomore from Kennewick, not a big big player at 6'1", 206 pounds, but he plays big. 
86 tackles coming into this game. An interception returned for a touchdown this year. Eight tackles for losses and a couple of sacks. He's, he's a tremendous athlete when it comes to his attitude. He's out there playing with the scout team. Usually you get into a little tussle from time to time. Coach said he wanted to take on all 11 guys in the scout team by himself right then. Second and 10. Just underway, second half for Martin Stadium and Pullman. Brunel on the option, will keep it. He gets about four. Torrey Hunter simply ducked his head, got underneath Brunel, picked him up, tossed him over his shoulders, no problem. Looked like a World Wrestling Federation yeah. move. Yeah. We talked earlier about number 41, McClanahan. Watch him as he reads the play. He's going to engage here and get, gets off. He does that, gets to the outside. He's right there if Torrey isn't. Third down and five. Last year, the Huskies were 52% on third down situations. As I mentioned earlier, 35.8%. That's second in the Pac-10, but a considerable dip down from a year ago. Brunel. It's going to have to be forced out of bounds. The job done right there by number 19, Kurt Lersher. Brunel coming to the near side. He's a left-handed quarterback, so he would have had to thrown back against his body. And on a day like this with field conditions, that's very difficult, Lynn. Well, that's tough to do, but the secondary for, for the Cougars really made that play happen. They were covering extremely well. Nobody opened downfield. And that's their first sack on the day is Wardell goes back to punt. He's had punts of 43, 65, a career high, and then 16. And Torrey Hunter standing back inside the 20. Wardell kicking into the wind. That's a low punt. Gets a nice bounce on it. Now, Torrey Hunter picks it up. Dangerous move, but he gets it to the 30. Trying to make amends, possibly, for that punt that he let go in the first half that or just realizing he has to do something back here he just can't let the ball roll he waits the ball takes a good hop for him to pick it up and he makes the move the thing for the huskies you can't go down there and be lax you got to realize that he always has that option 33 yards on the punt six on the return and now drew bledsoe he's thrown eight interceptions in his last five games but he's ninth in the nation in total offense to try to get his team rallied that first drive today went 80 yards. Since then, four drives have accounted for only 77. And Sean Bay right there goes in motion to the far side on first and 10. The quick hitter to Bobo. And Bobo still go-goes. And he gets the first down to the 40-yard line. Shane Palakoa came up to make the stop. Field position, very important in this game. As we look at Washington State's first half possessions, they got on their own 20 and marched down for, for a great drive and a touchdown but missed the extra point. The rest of the time, they've been backed up pretty good, except for that last possession they took at their own 36, where they had some opportunities, but as you saw, they missed the field goal. Bledsoe, 9 of 16, 110 yards on first down. Shambe right fair across midfield to the 45-yard line, where the freshman Steve Hoffman, number 91 from San Jose, brings him down after 15 yards on the pickup. In cold weather, you've got to make yourself reach out and grab people and tackle. The feeling is you don't want to use your hands, whether you have a glove or not, because they're so cold. You don't feel like you're getting a grip on things, but you've got to use them. You've got to hit and still wrap people up. Both teams are missing tackles because they're not wrapping people up. 13 carries, 75 yards for Sean Bay, as C.J. Davis will go in motion on first and 10 from the 45-yard line. Up the middle again, and not much there as Andy Mason was quickly there from the outside. No problem on that one as Andy Mason makes the stop. And Miami taking care of Syracuse right now, but Texas A&M in a struggle against TC. You can believe Michigan with three ties. I guess Moeller looks pretty smart for going for the tie last week, huh? Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're going to the Rose Bowl. That's yeah, the bottom line. Moeller Mol huh? did the right thing in terms of wrapping up the Rose Bowl. Uh, Ohio State has improved consistently throughout the year. Just played them strong. Second and nine from the 44. Bledsoe all day to throw it. All day to throw it. Now he goes deep. Caught. Touchdown. What a catch by Philip Bobo. 
That's the way to go, go. 44 yards on the touchdown pass. C.J. Davis was right there, too. The weather was a big factor in this play, Roger. Well, right here, you don't know who he's throwing to. Both guys are open, both guys are there. But Bobo oh, makes the catch. He's standing in the pocket. Look at Bledsoe. Nobody's rushing him. They can't get any traction. They're trying to rush, but they don't have it. He gets all the time in the world and just flings it. Look at him. He probably doesn't know right now which guy's going to make the catch. He didn't care. <laughs> as long as they caught it, and they did. And the Cougars will go for two, leading 12-7. The split backs. Now, fan out. Sean Bay right there in the slot to the far side. And the motion man, C.J. Davis. As Bledsoe eludes one tackler, now throws back, and he's got it. The two-point conversion. Let's see. Sheck Snyder. Yeah. Sheck Snyder makes the catch, and they get the two-point conversion. And the Cougars lead the Huskies 14-7 here in Pullman. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them. I can tell you exactly how that feels. One of these engines was filled with Castro Syntec, a new synthetic oil. The rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see Syntec's unique molecular structure bonds to engine parts. That, as show, it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castro Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. For 65 grand, this Corvette ZR1 comes with anti-lock brakes, a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, and a roadside assistance program. For under nine grand, this Cavalier VL also comes with anti-lock brakes, the warranty, the roadside assistance program, and, unlike the VET, has this handy cup holder. Hey, 65 grand for the VET and no slide-out cup holder? I'd go for the Cavalier. Brent Couples, Tom Kite, Greg Norman, and Payne Stewart. Four of golf's leading men see who's the king of swing in the Skins game next Saturday on ABC Sports. Well, Len, the Cougars opened the game with a touchdown drive, and they opened the second half with a touchdown drive. And now they've got to back it up with strong defense and see if they can continue to score. As Price kicks it off, and Barry will take it at the 12. Jay Berry across the 25 to 26. And just take a listen here, folks, on the uh, two-point conversion for Washington State. I'll tell you. Hang on to it. That, that was Jaime Fields, number three. Sean Palacoa, number 21. He also saw behind him, number 54, Dave Hoffman, who hit Calvin Schechtsnader on that play. Who, uh, Calvin's from a pretty good athletic family. Cousins are Icky Woods and Freddie Solomon. Well, huh? I hope Icky Woods not teach them how to dance. <laughs> First and ten from the 27. Coffin's got nowhere to go. And, folks, the man right there for Washington State University, number 48, Lewis Bush, the senior from Tacoma. Bush broke his foot earlier in the year, has a steel plate in the bottom of it. It's his option whether or not he'll have it removed at some point in time. Says his main problem is going through the metal detectors at the airport. Yeah. And they're stopping him all the time. And he takes his sock off and he says, you just got to believe me. There's you got to believe me. <laughs> Second and nine. Brunel looks quickly to the far side. He's got his receiver, but nowhere to go for Damon Berry because Greg Burns was all over him. And Burns, the young man from Los Angeles, 5'10", 160. At the beginning of the year, Lynn, they were picking on this kid. They don't pick on him anymore. Well, they didn't want to go against Torrey Hunter. Torrey Hunter seemed to show himself well early, 
They came after Burns, but Burns did a great job on that play. He kept the receiver in front of him. He read the quarterback, and once the ball was thrown, he came up straight into the body of the receiver to make the stop. Five interceptions so far this year for Burns, second in the Pac-10. Now third and four for the Huskies. Brunel on the option. Keeps it. He has room. Brunel across midfield. Brunel is pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line and over one of the metal benches. And John Rushing, the player that shoved him out of bounds, being chased by a couple of the Huskies. But Brunel was not out of bounds when he was hit by Rushing. But we'll take one more look at it. What happens here, now watch it. The option, everybody's got to take a man. Right here, everyone is covered. But what Brunel says, he dips in, slips to the outside, then he makes a man who should have been covering him go to the pitch man. He keeps the ball, picks up the big yards. Well, on the hit, the pitch does give way. But Brunel's okay. He's okay. Landed in a snow drift. He got up and actually limped for a couple of steps. From the 41-yard line, first and 10, they give it to the first back through, a no-go right there for Matt Jones. Ray Hall, the junior from Seattle, number 92, was the first man to meet him. Hall is a force inside, 34 tackles on the year. This is a defense, once again, we reiterate, they have played so much better this year. They're a young defense, and if they can keep this thing close, and this defense, Lynn, has been able to do that, and it's really been the offense that's kind of let this team down late in the year. Washington State's got a real good chance. Second and 10. Middle screen, whoa, what a stick right there as Jones was the intended receiver and Anthony McClanahan. Jones never had his hands on that football. Anthony just wanted to check his hat size on that one. He could hear the snow crushing behind him as he was about to make that catch. And then McClanahan just lays him out. But I don't think Jones ever really had his hands on the football and controlled it. Right there, he it slips right through, and he pays the price. McClanahan in excellent position, mm. making the hit. McClanahan, 15 tackles against Stanford last week. Third down and 10 from the 41 for the Huskies. Brunel, down the middle, broke it up. Rushing was there. Bjornsson, the intended receiver. And this Cougar defense comes up big. They've done a terrific job not allowing the big plays this year. 11 pass completions over 30 yards in 10 games, so that's about one a game. And they have done a terrific job, and they've gotten better as the year has gone on. John Wardell now will come in to punt it. Torrey Hunter standing back at the 10-yard line. If this ball looks short. He's going to come up and take a chance and field it. Into the wind, Wardell from the 45. And he angles it for the near side, but it's hooking back in. And it just crosses the goal line. Nice try by Wardell that time. And with 9-12 to go in the third quarter, Washington State leads it 14-7. It takes strength to go climbing seven days a week. One compact pickup powers you with the biggest full-size V6 engine you can get. Only Chevy S10 Tahoe 4x4. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Make it clear. Make it colorful. Make it both. The Desk Jet 550C. With Desk Jet printers from Hewlett Packard, it's easy to make it happen. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a Die Hard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard, the battery you can count on for more power when you need it most. Hitachi? Wait, I know, I know. They make... Look, your favorite show. <gasps> oh. Hitachi makes Yay. big screen TVs and 20,000 other entertaining products. Hitachi. Here, there, 
everywhere. The Desk Jet Portable. Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. Make it happen. Well, tomorrow on ABC Sports, Acura presents the Virginia Slims Championships. It'll be that lady, Monica Sellis, against Martina Navratilova. That's live at 1 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific time right here on ABC Sports as Washington State takes it. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Bledsoe got some time. Got a man, Carroll, in the tight end. Brett Carroll is still on his feet. All right, good, big, strong, tight end. Brett Carolyn, a junior from Nevada, California, 17 yards on the pickup. He comes across the center of the field. The Tyler Powell and I thought that Washington State would have stayed, stayed away from him, but I think they've got to go to it because that's where the tight ends really come into play. He comes across the middle, makes a catch. He finally gets his body turned up field and just nails Josh Moore. Trips to the near side on first and 10 from the 37 as they give it to Shabe right there. He gets a couple off the right side to Marco Farr, the junior defensive tackle for the University of Washington in there on the stop. Brett Carroll in number 89. I had a chance to talk to him on Lynn at practice. And of course, his dad played in the National Football League with the Chiefs. He said, and his dad went to the University of Idaho, which is just down the road in Moscow. And he said it was really great when he signed with Washington State. He got a letter from Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Chiefs, and said, you know, your dad was a great player for us. I'm really excited for you. The Chiefs are over in Seattle, as a matter of fact, playing the Seahawks this weekend. And uh, wanted me to pass along regards to uh, all those uh, old friends of his uh, dads with the Kansas City organization. As Bledsoe throws down the field, the intended receiver was Daron Pointer, number nine, the junior from Tacoma, and you saw a little bit right there of the arm of Drew Bledsoe where he put a little bit extra on that football. Well, he had to because Deron Horner was just inside the coverage man, and so you've got to put zip. That's Walter Bailey, number 23. He's just inside him. That's catchable, but again, that ball comes with a lot of zip on it. Cold, hard to handle on a day like this. He's a big man. He just stands in that pocket. He flings it. Third down and seven from the 40-yard line. 8.08 to go, third quarter. Trips to the near side for the Cougars as Bledsoe checks off at the line of scrimmage. And they'll run it with Sean Bay right there. He had a big hole there. Still going, and he's close to the first down at the 47-yard line where Dave Hoffman, the All-America from San Jose, and James Clifford, the inside backer, number 53, were there on the tackle. If he's short of the first down, they're only short by about a foot. Or maybe even inches. Well, it seems after halftime where the snow started to lighten up a little bit, it has now started to come down a little bit harder. The wind has picked up a little bit more. For a moment there, we could see the hills. We actually could see the hills. the campus, but now it's just Wait. gray sky. How's that flight looking? Well, <laughs> how's that drive looking? Well, the drive's not looking too good, but the drive, I think, is looking better than the flight right now. <laughs> I'd say if we're moving from the stadium after the game, we're walking, and they're just short yeah. of the first down. So that'll bring up a fourth down and about a foot. And let's see what Mike Price is going to do in this situation, it's leading a, by seven. This is, a, this is a big risk. It's a very big risk to take. They're on their side of the field. He told them he didn't want to take chances on his own half of the field. He did. If he goes for the fourth down, he's going against what he said his thinking was for the philosophy of this football team, and he is going for it. And they have the wind to their back, so if they punted it, they could get Washington in poor field position conceivably. Fourth down and about a foot. Bledsoe got it. Well, when you're 6'5 and 230, and you got a big, strong offensive line, and if they're confident and they're firing off the ball, then you got a chance to make that, and they did. Yeah, but give, give Bledsoe a little more credit here. He takes the ball. He goes, watch him. He's going to go over the guard center. He stopped. Now watch him go off to the side. Boom. Another shot. Hoffman was the first guy to get to him there, Lynn. Hoffman makes Dave. contact. But right he's there. so big. Look, he doesn't have any power behind him because he's off his feet. I also you, had the leverage. I'm looking at that offensive line of Bailey, Dunning, Tobeck, Pimiskern, and Tribble. They got the short sleeves on today. They don't have any long sleeves, those big loads. 
They love it in this kind of weather. And they're winning the battle off the football right now on first and 10. Bledsoe going down to Pointer. Walter Bailey makes a tackle, but Pointer takes him to the 23-yard line. 30 yards on the pickup. They come back with the same play. This time, Pointer gets up here and makes a catch. They play man coverage. And Walter Bailey has a reputation for being the fine coverage man, but he has not been playing up to that level this year. Teams have stayed away from him to some degree. Well, I think this Cougar team is going to come after him a little bit more today. Darren Pointer with the reception, and now the Cougars have it first and 10 from the 22-yard line. Bledsoe checks off at the line of scrimmage with 7.03 to go third quarter. Quick out, he's got Davis down to the 15-yard line, and let's go to New York and John Sider. John? Roger, where things are a lot warmer than where you are, things start to heat up here at the end of the first half. A late hit got this thing started. Then when they were headed to the locker rooms, they really get into it, no ejections. But Marshall Falk was ejected or rejected from the game with a hit. He has a sprained right knee, may return. He does have a touchdown. Roger. Well, Marshall Falk with only 21 yards in the game because of that injury in San Diego State trying to win the whack. And 21 yards, maybe one TKL. Second down and two at the 15. The Cougars with another drive going. Bledsoe's got a man open. Touchdown! Calvin Schechtsneider. of the year for Sheck Snyder and for Bledsoe his 18th touchdown pass the point after good hey what about it we're cooking at Pullman right now imagine a rent a car company that offers special delivery right to your door that's enterprise Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. Hitachi. Oh, wait, that's my phone. You know. Bonjour. He has his phone. Looks good from here. Hello. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Take care. Hitachi makes digital communication systems and 20,000 other amazing products. Hitachi. State Farm sells life insurance. And when we start you out with a life insurance plan, our job is just beginning. You see, we're there after you buy the policy, keeping in touch as your life changes, listening, explaining, answering your questions, helping you keep your life insurance plan up to date as your needs change. State Farm agents are there to start you right, and we're there to keep things right for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. For those who want to drive something really foreign, the Lumina, fully independent sports suspension, anti-lock brakes, fuel-injected V6. For more details and a test drive, see your Chevrolet dealer. Washington State leads Washington 21 to seven, and I don't know if you believe in omens, Lynn Swan, but uh, I was told before this I game the that the last two Washington State victories, something happened at both of those games, there was snow. It was coming down the last win, 1988. It's called the Pullman Omen. When it well, snows, they seem to go. The Cougars will kick it off. Aaron Price to kick it, and back deep to Bully and Kaufman and Jay Berry. That'll come to Jay Berry, number 42 at the 12-yard line. 
still on his feet. Uh, he got a face mask. Penalty marker. Penalty marker down. That's going to be a face mask against Washington State. And the problem with that kind of face mask is, you know the young man didn't intend on no. grabbing it. It was unintentional, but the way he grabbed it and the way it pulled him back, he may be assessed with the 15-yard penalty. You watch here. He's going through. He stopped. Now, if you don't grab him by the face mask here, he might be able to turn around and keep going. He did release it, however. Kevin Ashworth, 57, was the guy that grabbed him going by, and they'll step it off against Washington State. And there's Sheck Snyder, the scoring drive, eight plays, 80 yards. So they've got their hands on the football twice so far here in the second half, and they've scored both times. Had 70 yards in that first drive. And the battle up front line is being won by Washington State right now. Their offensive line is just coming off the ball better. Bledsoe's getting some time to throw it. It makes all the difference. Well, again, that defensive line can't get the traction. Plus, you know what they're not doing? They're not blitzing people. The few times they have blitz, Bledsoe has been able to pick it up. Last year in this ball game, although Washington really destroyed the Cougars on the scoreboard, every time they blitzed, Bledsoe took advantage of it. He had three touchdown passes against him in that game. Pressure on the Huskies of Washington right now. They trail 21-7, 6.05 to go. Kaufman up the middle, picks his way through for about four yards. Napoleon Kaufman, young man from Lompoc, California, highly recruited player coming out of high school there. Nearly went to the University of Arizona. It came down between Arizona and Washington. At Lompoc High, he rushed for over 5,100 yards and 86 touchdowns. Well, when you can run 4.3 in the 40-yard dash, and you're strong, you can do it. Second and six, Kaufman's rushed 13 times for 50 yards. Today is Brunel. has got a man open. His tight end, Bruner, downfield. And it was underthrown. Bruner had to hold up. Singor Mobley was back on the coverage that time. Bruner's the second leading receiver for Washington, but Mobley had him well covered. Mobley had him covered. Mobley did one thing against Bruner that was very, very smart. The ball was in the air, and he turns around to look back at the ball right there. You see him, he's backing into him, and he's blocking him, but he's looking at the football. If he hadn't turned around, it would have been pass interference. Krolik is their leading receiver, Lynn, and I don't think he's got a pass today. Third down and six. Brunel near side, Mack the intended receiver, nothing there. Damon Mack went up in the air, but the ball was overthrown. Rushing and Burns were there on the coverage. And this Washington State defense has some momentum. Their confidence is building, and they're really shutting down the Huskies right now. Well, they're fired up. They've been able to stop the run pretty good. They're playing the pass extraordinarily well. See how they keep the receivers in front of them, Roger? And then react up to the ball. They're playing smart, conservative defense, not giving them too big a cushion for the pass underneath. Wardell back to punt. His two punts with the win, 54 yards, three punts into the win, 29 yards. Guess what? This is into the win, and it is downed immediately. Not a very good play right there as that ball was end over end. It was starting to bounce, but it was down at the 31-yard line, 27 yards of the punt. Now, Washington State got off to a 5-0 start, and in the first five games, Bledsoe threw for over 1,400 yards, 10 touchdowns. They were 5-0. They outscored their opponents, but their opponent's record was 19-29-1. The last five games... They're two and three. He's thrown for just over a thousand, seven interceptions, and look at the opponent's record there, 29, 15, and one. The Pac-10 is, if not the one of the toughest conferences in the country right now, and that's what happened. They got into conference play, and the offense just slowed down. Flag thrown against the offense. Watch the center right here. The Rob thing gets against him. Robbie he Tobek. Just, <laughs> because he starts to snap it. Uh, Tobek and Bledsoe are roommates. Now, they, they should have worked on this, Lynn, <laughs> countless number of times, so they got nothing else to do, right? Yeah, it should have been a, it should have been a shorter hitch. Bledsoe, 14 of 22, 222 yards. And two touchdown passes. Bledsoe, look at this rock at the Bobo. At the 40-yard line, he slips and falls. Gain of eight. 
Hillary Butler, 45, came up to make the stop 13 yards on the reception. You know, this uh, University of Washington football team played seven home games this year. This is their last regular season game. They're going to the Rose Bowl to take on the University of Michigan. But they went through a stretch of about six weeks where they had just one road game. That was at Oregon. So very unusual scheduling as Washington with seven home games this year and finishing up here in Pullman against Washington State on second and two. Sean Bay right there. And this offensive line of Washington State is flat getting after the Huskies. Roger, the, the Cougars have really been catching the Washington team off. They see the front four right here. These guys are coming in, rushing, but they're not getting these other people to blitz. This time, these people come on the blitz, but they've got the perfect play against it. They're all stacked up, ready to come. They've got the quick play to hit right where they're blitzing from to take advantage of it. Cougars are right on top of their game tactically. First and 10, 49-yard line. so going deep, the intended receiver, C.J. Davis. And, well, I'll tell you, Bledsoe's running over to the official with a word or two. He thought his receiver was being held over there. He thought those pass interference. He ran over the one to say something to the official. This is a huge game for Washington State. Every year, their biggest game is generally against Washington. That's not necessarily true for the Huskies against Washington State because their program has been at the top level for a number of years. But this win today gets them eight and three, gets them a bowl picture, and then maybe makes a big decision in this young man's career about what he does. As Sean Bay right there up the middle. He's gone. Let's go off the way. He does. Touchdown. Touchdowns in the third quarter. I'm Al Michaels with an invitation to join us from New Orleans for Monday Night Football. All of a sudden, a very vital game for the Washington Redskins, who are 6 and 4, led by Art Monk and the Posse and Wilbur Marshall, who's having an all pro season. They take on the New Orleans Saints, who come in with a mark of 7 and 3. Washington, New Orleans, Monday. Sunday, put up your feet, grab a snack, a cold drink, and unwind. With America's Funniest Home Videos and Otis Day in the Night. Kick my heels up, throw my head back, On America's Funniest People after America's Funniest Home Videos Sunday. 28-7, Washington State leads at 357, and shot Bay right fair, exhorting the crowd on. Here's another look at the touchdown. Watch these guys come out and block down. The linebacker's going to step right here in the middle of the hole. He's going to get taken out. There's going to be just a big gap there right in the middle of the line. It's a highway for seven right there. Boom, it doesn't take long if the timing is perfect. 18 carries, 144 yards for Sean Bay right there. And... Folks, this kid is the only running back this year to go over 100 yards against the Desert Swarm defense at the University of Arizona. He has got some talent, and there is a very poor kickoff, and a penalty marker is thrown. So the decision by Washington State to take the wind to start the third quarter looks like a very good one. Well, it, it, it's pl playing into their hands. They've been able to throw the ball deep and throw it well and consistently. But as I look out there, I see the wind swirling quite a bit. But it's still on the field going more towards the end zone of the Huskies. Over 
with a 28-7 lead for the Cougars. It's up to the defense to continue to stop the Huskies. Work towards that field position. Not to let up. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. The University of Washington trailing by 21. Brunel pitches it back to Kaufman. And look at this defense. Attack. Mark Fields, 29, was the man that finished the play. And loose ball. Yes, the Cougars have it. First and 10 from the 33. Bledsoe back to pass and thrown to Williams. It looks like the catch. Yes. Butch Williams, number 98, the senior from Seattle, making his 33rd consecutive start with a good grab for the guy with the not so good hands. I mean, how do you do it so often? This man, Bledsoe, number 11, look at him off his back foot. Why is that he flings the football? I mean, he throws it with his arm. Look at there. Gets it there. He gets his hands underneath it. That's a good catch. Williams has had trouble holding on to the football this year. That's his first reception today. Second and one, and Bledsoe goes to the far side to C.J. Davis, and that is a completion. And this passing game is humming right now, and the Huskies don't have many answers. A first down for Washington State as they have dominated this third quarter of football here in Pullman. As we look at Bledsoe, we know that Mike Price said that they're going to sit down and talk at the end of the season about what he is going to do. And Mike Price wants Bledsoe to do what he feels is right for him. He is not concerned with the program here at Washington State and having him stay, although he would like to have him stay. He wants what's best for this young man. First and 10, 17-yard line. Davis was the man in motion. They'll give it to Shambay right there, try to cut it back across. Gain of about three that time for Shambay. Mason, the man in on the stop. Clock runs, 225 to go third quarter. A lot of football left, but you got to think. With the momentum now that the Cougars have built, the confidence that they're showing, not just defensively, but now offensively also, this is going to be a tough nut for Washington to come back on as the pass goes through the hands of Brett Carolyn, the most sure-handed of the Cougar receivers. Uh, he did make that catch. I have to believe Washington State trying to take full advantage of the wind in their favor, keeping the ball in the air. Bledsoe still has pressure on him. Watch Clifford. They're well, sending more people. Well, Clifford hit him late. I think that's the a late, late hit. hit. Clifford hit him late. Great. Look at Bledsoe's going right to the official. And, and the, the flag. flag did come out. We just didn't see it. Tell you, we need windshield wipers in front of the booth here. That is what we need. I got to tell you, the smoke's coming in here. Folks, we have an open-air booth. And uh, we're not complaining. We're not complaining. No, we like it. But that snow does swirl in here from time to time. Not as much as it's swirling around Don James at the moment, however. Well, you had to wonder about Washington. After losing to Arizona, dropping down in the rankings, what was their focus point. What did they need to do this week? Was this just another game for them on the way to the Rose Bowl? National title hopes out the window. First and goal from the seven. Sean Bay right there with the hole and down to the one yard line. Yes, Happy holidays everybody. <laughs> Here we go. This reminds me of some games I've played in Pittsburgh. Oh, you're used to this weather, man. Yeah. You made the transition, though, from well, California. You know, before, the, before the game, I went down on the field to see what the field was like, to see how cold it was. I took my gloves off, and Bledsoe was throwing me a couple of passes. Did you catch him? I caught him. I missed the first one because it hurt so much. Second and goal for the one. Fumble. Fumble. Bledsoe never got a handle on it.
tough situation for the offensive line unless that ball is right in between your feet to recover it because they don't see it. 28 to 7. Washington State leads. They were down at the inside the one yard line and depending upon where this ball is now it's right near the goal line yeah they're in the end zone if, if a Washington State player has recovered it I think it would be a touchdown if he's in the end zone you see where the ball's at the officials have to get the players away from that pile now away from the ball outside of that pile touchdown. it's a touchdown who got it who scored it Well, that's offense by accident right there. Flag was thrown. Yeah, now some players are coming out in the field. They're trying to get them separated. We're still trying to see. I think it was. It was Pimister. Conrad Pimister, the senior from West Vancouver, British Columbia. And what an exciting moment for him. An offensive lineman's dream. Six wow. points. I'm sure he's never scored before. Richardson's the referee today. Dennis Angel's the umpire. John Echternack, the head linesman. Craig Gallagher, the line judge. Field judge is Harvey Jones. Side judge, Thomas Seismanski and James Northcott, the back judge. And they're all together there today. <laughs> trying to get some uh, answers to the uh, questions that everybody has. Like, what happened there? And a personal foul after the touchdown against Washington. That'll be assessed on the kickoff. There's Pimiskern. And but Tobat snaps the ball back. Bledsoe touches it. Yeah. And the ball moves forward. Gets kicked in the end zone. And he just recovers it. Now, you don't know at this point whether he actually falls on it and recovers it or whether he just took it away from somebody under the pile. Regardless, he comes up with it. He's getting credit for six points. His name will be on the scoring list. Aaron Price will come in to attempt the point after. And they're going to get another football in there. So with 125 left to go, third quarter, the Washington State University Cougars are just about ready to put this thing into a very difficult situation for the University of Washington Huskies to come back from. Well, it may not be out of reach, but it certainly will be long distance. That's a good solid kick right there by Aaron Price. And the Cougars lead the Huskies 35 to 7. And the story in this third quarter has been the big people. The offensive line for Washington State University getting off the football, creating the holes for Sean Bay right there, giving Bledsoe the protection, and then this Washington State defense, which has come up big today. I want to remind you about our college football schedule over the Thanksgiving holidays because we'll be bringing you on Thanksgiving Day at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific time, Auburn and Alabama. And of course, Alabama undefeated, looking to face Florida in that Southeastern Conference Championship game. And then on Friday, out of the Big 8, it'll be Nebraska and Oklahoma. The Big 8's really up in the air right now. Who's going to go to the Orange Bowl? A lot of possibilities with Colorado and Nebraska after being upset last week by Iowa State. In Oklahoma, a little discontention uh, among the players down there concerning the quarterback situation. But there are no problems with the quarterbacks here. Well, there's not a player on the Washington Mike, State team that wouldn't follow Bledsoe anywhere. Mike Price has not defeated Washington as the head coach of Washington State, and Drew Bledsoe has not defeated Washington as a player. And when we talked about the possibilities of Drew Bledsoe leaving, going to the NFL draft this spring or January winter. He said if he were to beat Washington because he's achieved one of his goals being here, that might push him a little closer towards leaving. But let's look at the pros and cons. If he stays, he could be the all-time passing leader in the Pac-10 and here at Washington State, obviously. He is, a, he is a viable and a legitimate candidate for the Heisman Trophy. And he could break 
all of the Washington State passing records, which he's broken a number of, and that includes the Pac-10 passing records. Deep kick now. Look at this wind has really picked up as Aaron Fry is able to kick that one but, through the end zone. But as we look at Bledsoe's stats here, if he should go, he would get the big dollars, obviously. Uh, then he goes at a time when there is no wage scale, and there's a possibility that with all the litigation against the NFL and the ongoing negotiation with the defunct Players Association, there could be a percentage of the income given to the players and a wage scale established for incoming players, which would knock them out of the box for maybe one of the big million-dollar contracts. Well, it was interesting this week. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about that. And, and, you know, both of his parents are school teachers. His dad, a former high school head coach, now an assistant uh, uh, high school coach. Uh, his father, Mac, uh, at Eisenhower High in Yakima. As a matter of fact, they're playing in a state uh, playoff game today. And, you know, he's from Walla Walla. Uh, you know, he came to Washington State because he was comfortable in this environment. He, he wouldn't have been comfortable in Seattle at the University of Washington. And he does have a choice here. Now, we've heard talk about Tampa Bay wanting to trade up to get the number one pick. A lot was resting on how he played today because, in all honesty, Lynn, you know, the second half of the year has not been a great half of football for Drew Bledsoe. But so far today in three quarters, he has come up big, he has shown well, and Washington just can't get anything going against this Cougar defense. Chad Eaton, 90, the first man there, and Chris Frank, 97, the second man, in on the tackle and now Don James in this really unusual year of college football with Michigan going to the Rose Bowl with three ties and it looks for the moment that Washington goes to the Rose Bowl with two losses but Washington can still achieve something no team ever has that's winning three consecutive Rose Bowls. That's correct this would be his sixth Rose Bowl appearance and he is also a candidate for the Bear Bryant Award nation's top coach and we haven't talked about this today but i think the absence of billy joe hobart makes this team who lost people last year defensively like entman and chico fraley they're just not as good a team as they were before. still a very good football team still a but their strongest team. position was quarterback you had two rose bowl winning quarterback yeah but but you were alternating right i believe that in that situation someone like Brunel doesn't gain as much confidence because he's always switching. I believe a one quarterback system is much better for the timing, for people to get more comfortable with the one guy than alternating, switching two guys in. Washington has been very successful with it, but I don't think it necessarily makes each player better. I agree with what you're saying, but the point I guess I'm trying to make is, for example, in the Arizona game when things weren't going right, you had that option of putting a Hobart in, or you had an option of bringing a Brunel in if things weren't going well, and they, they had a lot of success that way. And because of the situation where Billy Joe Hobart was suspended for the rest of this year, and he probably will not come back to Washington. I, I, I believe that uh, his suspension uh, will be enforced, that he will no longer be back at Washington. I believe that, you know, if, if Drew Bledsoe decides to go into the draft, you will see Bledsoe in the draft. You'll see Brunel because he is a senior and Billy Joe right. because he figures, well, I might as well go now because I have no team to play for. And the people I've talked to project Billy Joe Hobart as like a third or fourth round draft pick right now. Second down and 11 after the Washington State timeout. Brunel's going to tuck it under. Nope. He's going to swing it out to the near side. And Damon Berry across the 30 and enough for the first down to the 33-yard line where Torrey Hunter makes the tackle. Mark Brunel, 14 yards uh, on that pass and run, is a guy that's got 4'5", four, 4'6", four, feet. Now, he came back from that anterior cruciate ligament tear. And the coaches, Lynn, really feel that in the time he was off, he was able to improve his arm strength and really became a better passer. Worked on it, worked on his arm, his accuracy, could no longer rely on the, on the speed and his running ability, which is very important. You see the stats right there. 40 seconds left to go. Third quarter. First and 10 for Washington as Brunel will tuck it under and run with the football, trying to get outside, still on his feet. And Brunel at midfield before he finally runs out of bounds. John Rushy was the last man there, 18 yards on the pickup as Brunel, uh, well, some people want to draw a comparison to Steve Young. Is there any in, in college, Lynn? Uh, I, I think it's similar for his coach. Look at this, the blocking up front, the center and the right guard just take on the nose tackle. That was Chad Eaton. They just destroyed there at the line of scrimmage. I created the, the alley. Draw, right? Yeah, for eight, plan, for Brunel to go through. 29 seconds. 
Brunel, nine carries, 62 yards. He's the top rusher today for the Huskies on the play action, throwing it to the near side. He finds over there his fullback, Matt Jones, who's driven out at the 41-yard line. Well, the Huskies doing what they what they really need to do, put the ball in the air, try and get bigger chunks of yardage on each play. Well, but what's going to have to happen as the time running out in the third quarter is that the Husky, de the Cougar defense is now about to find a way to put a little more pressure on Mark Brunel to keep him away from that. We'll return with more action between Washington and Washington State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Alternative to all this, the Chevy Cavalier VL for under nine grand, including anti lock brakes, three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, roadside assistance program, and that great new car smell. <laughs> David, dinner time! <laughs> David, dinner! Come on, David, we're going to McDonald's! Whoa, we gotta go, guys! With our $2.99 Big Mac Extra Value Meal and low-priced Happy Meals, dinner at McDonald's should actually sound as good to you as it does to your kids. What you want is what you get at McDonald's tonight. David, bath time. What? David? Premiering Tuesday, December 1st. Get ready to meet the boss from hell. Hey, you with the voice, you're fired! New Rainier Ice Lagered Cold Filter Draft Light. Rainier and a light piece of ice. Draft. 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 When you compare Bravada's Smart Track to Explorer's four-wheel drive, it's easy to see who's in control of the situation and who's slipping up. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Up a steep grade, under slippery conditions, the Oldsmobile Bravada can beat the Ford Explorer. Even with one boat tied behind its back. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Sea Lions versus Fishermen. My special report Monday at 6.30. And welcome back here to Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington on the Palouse where the weather is nasty. And Washington State has been even nastier to the University of Washington. As we start the final 15 minutes, the Cougars lead the Huskies 35 to 7. And Washington has it second down and three from the 41-yard line. Short pass, and boy, the intended receiver right there, Jason Shelley, the freshman from Vallejo, California, either didn't know the ball was coming or it was so far behind him, it just kind of surprised him as we take a look at the uh, numbers after three quarters of play. And the most impressive number right here is at the bottom from Washington State University, 405 yards of total offense in the third quarter. So far in the season, the most yards ever against the Huskies was 344. And then look at this one. The yards rushing. Unbelievable that they've given up so many yards on the ground. That's one of the things that uh, I thought was going to be a key factor today was Washington State being able to rush the football. They've run so far for 13 more yards, and that's been an effective part of their game on third and three. Brunel is dumped for just the second time today, and the man who got him was Ron Childs. His third sack of the year. As I said, the Cougars have to find a way to get pressure. You see, 75, Lincoln Kennedy blocking his man out. He hasn't given up a sack all year. Or, excuse me, he's given up one. But when he takes out his man, and you can take him wide, that creates an alley underneath. And number 31, Childs, was able to go underneath and get the sack. There you see Childs on the year. Boy, a crucial player, 86 tackles. That is third sack, and now Wardell goes back for a seventh punt, standing back at the 35-yard line. He'll have the wind to his back as Torrey Hunter 
standing at the 10, and this wind is really starting to pick up. Fair catch called by uh, Hunter, and he lets it go. Now he picks it up. He can't. And he runs into the end zone. He can't do There's that. There's a penalty marker. He's j he was totally confused. Torrey the defense, Hunter. The defense, Roger, was offsides. Coming into the uh, punt, jumped offsides. Then he signals for a fair catch and picks it up. That's another penalty. If you signal for a fair catch and you don't catch it, you cannot pick the ball up or recover it. Listen, the coaching staff's got to give him instructions about what to do in this situation. Just make the fair catch and, and don't worry about trying to run it back. There's the offside call. And then the penalty against Washington. Last thing you want to do here is give Washington a cheap score. You're ahead 35 to 7. So watch. Uh, he already he called the fair catch. He comes over. He signals for the fair yeah. catch. See, he should know better on his own. Your yeah. coach should always have to come up to you and tell you what to do in this situation. Yeah. You, sh you, you should know. You can't go up to every player and remind them all the time. What you have to remind them of in this situation is if the ball's coming down in a certain area, catch it. If it's not, get away from it. He was concerned about what happened before where he let the ball land in front of him and then it rolled back and they were able to down it. And this time, a uh, fair catch. Then he saw it look like it was going to stop. Yeah. You know, and now oh, I better pick it up. Yeah, but he, he, his confusion. Yeah. You see both Bo calls, the offsides and the illegal handling of the punt. The fair catch and then trying to return it. And the official's microphone obviously not working today, but the uh, two penalties, both against Washington State University. And with 13.56 left to go in this game, on a day like this, Lynn, I've seen, you know, not uh, we don't want to discount Washington at this time because I have seen teams come back in conditions like this. It can just turn like that. Oh, absolutely. You get a couple of big plays, a uh, turnover down you, in the end. When you find yourself backed up against your own end zone, it could be a cheap touchdown mm -hmm. in the hand. So, it's like our producer, Joel, Fe Joel Feld, said that uh, <laughs> Tory Hunter has to go back to uh, special team special school. Special team school, huh? Well, there's been a lot of discussion down in this field today. You'd think as cold as it was, these, these officials might make quicker decisions, but they've been <laughs> thorough. They've been, you know, they've been Very checking everything thorough. out today. They've been covering all their bases. Regardless of what the penalty, which penalty they take, it's half the distance to the goal line. They're already inside the five. Look for the Huskies to load everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Go after them. If it's a run or pass, they're going to go after them. Play man-to-man -man defense. Lock up on those receivers. Because whatever Bledsoe does, if it's a pass, he's got to get rid of it very quickly. For those of you that are interested in, in little side notes, uh, when Washington State has accounted for more first downs than their opposition this year, they are 7-0. And when they have it, they're 0-3. And today, they have more first they downs. Have more first downs. Matter of fact, they're best in the Pac-10. They have uh, about 21 and a half first downs a game. That's what they're averaging. That's kind of like uh, the Huskies' 100-yard barometer. Every time they've had a back or that's gone over 100 yards, they're 36 and two in the last 38 games. In the last. Three, three or so years. Folks, that's what you call Phil. Yes. When uh, <laughs> we're standing around <laughs> waiting for this play to go. But Trying to stay warm. First and 12. As they hand it up the middle and just taking care of the ball. As far as look at him, he spun around and got up nearly to the 10-yard line. Let's go to New York now at John Saunders. Take it away, John. Roger, Fresno State and San Diego State. The Aztecs trying to win the whack with a victory here, but Trent Dilfer hits Malcolm Seaborn 17 yards, and Fresno State and the Bulldogs are up 38-34. Roger. Well, thank you very much, John. Uh, Marshall Falk has not returned, and uh, Hawaii was still a glimmer of hope uh, for that whack title. Kind of put the bowl picture uh, in place. A lot of things have uh, developed today, and... Uh, of course, John keeping you up to date on all that back in New York. Second down and five now from the nine-yard line as Davis comes in motion to the near side. Once again, that's number five there, Derek Sparks, and he's got the first down, so Shambe right there getting a bit of a rest. You see what Sparks did when he got to the sideline? He didn't slip. 
he intentionally went down after he got beyond the first down marker in, on the playing field so he wouldn't stop the clock. That's what Washington State Very smart play. has to keep doing now. They've got to control the football, use that clock, and it's going to be hard because they still, I think, have to throw the football to maintain control. Now, penalty marker was thrown. A late flag. I'll tell you, you know, the last time they signaled about five different calls, and I, you know, I didn't see them. It's a holding call? Okay. Holding call against Washington State. So that's going to move the ball back uh, to the five-yard line. It will remain second down. Washington, I think, is going to blitz. They're going to bring it. About nine as Bledsoe throws near side. Boone Borton. And Borton gets up to the 13-yard line. And, folks, that's his first reception this year. 82, Boone Borton makes the catch and gets him the first down. Daniel Boone Borton, by the way. <laughs> well, Borton, here it is. We're going to give everybody a replay of your first catch. It's a good one, too, and it's a heads-up play as he dives for the first down marker to keep this drive going. Well, just because you're sitting around watching doesn't mean your head's not in the game, huh? Wow. What a thrill for him. Bledsoe, 18 of 28, 260 yards, first and 10 from the 13-yard line with 12.58 left to go from Pullman. And Sparks looking for some room. And want to remind you, coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports, uh, we've got some exciting tennis action for you. As Acura presents the Virginia Slims Championships, the singles final, that lady Monica Sellis against Martina Navratilova. That's live at 1 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time. Hey, Sparks, Lynn, went to four high schools in four years. Wharton High in Texas, Banning High in California, Montclair Prep in Los Angeles. Sounds like a military family. And Matter Day in Santa Ana. Sounds like a military family. Or either that, he was highly recruited. <laughs> <laughs> in high school. In high school. <laughs> oh. He's not cold. He's going out on the Palouse after this. And take a hike as Bledsoe play action. All day to throw it. He's just waiting for somebody to get open. And then finally throws it down the middle. He had eight seconds to throw that football. Steve Hoffman, 91, finally got through. But you can't say enough about this offensive line. Bailey, Dunny, Tobeck, Pimiskern, and Let's Trip. go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,000. Oh, I was off by two seconds. <laughs> That's about, about six seconds. You, you, you teach a quarterback, he's got about three and a half seconds at the most to throw the football when he's going to you know, in, in any particular play. Absolutely. He's got twice as much time. Third down and nine. Ball at the 14. Davis in motion to the near side. 35 to seven. Cougars lead it as Bledsoe is just checked off at the line of scrimmage. And he gets rid of the football because they were coming hard. And they, I mean, 53, James Clifford and number one, Lewis Jones. We talked about the big things that Bledsoe possesses, his talent as a quarterback. He did something very smart there. He's checking off, but he had a man in motion. While he checked off, he yelled at that guy to stop to make sure he was stationary and set for a full second before he got this playoff, or else it would have been a penalty. When you've got a quarterback who is that calm, under pressure, you've got a chance of winning every game. Steve Johnson in to punt the first of this half. Now, he's punting into the wind, standing on his own goal line, and Kaufman is all the way back at the 45-yard line. A good adjustment for the way he's punting today. That's an end-over-end -end kick. And Washington will have great field position at the 39-yard line as Drew Bledsoe stays warm, the 25-yard punt. And we'll be back to Pullman after this. Before winter hits hard, get to Sears, America's number one tire store. For a limited time, all Goodyear tires and all Bridgestone road handlers are on sale at Sears. All weather Goodyear Arribas, as low as 1988, our lowest price ever. Backed by a 55,000 mile warranty, all Goodyear tires and all Bridgestone road handlers on sale. You can count on me. At America's number one tire store, Sears. What do you smell? I can't smell anything. My nose is clogged, yeah. For fast relief, try Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. 
mask now. It's an orange. Tristan nasal spray just works incredibly fast. Tristan, the face of relief today. In a world of constant change, there is one certainty. The financial strength of the rock. The prudential rock solid. Chevy Blazer. It seems this battle always affects the Big 8 title, and this year is no different. Nebraska tackles Oklahoma Friday on ABC Sports. And welcome back here to Pullman, Washington. Trying to keep warm over on the side. What's the coldest Lynn you ever uh, in a football game? Oh, in a football game? Yeah. Uh, about minus 10. We played the game against Cincinnati Bengals. This field is great condition compared to what we had. We were actually lined up off sides because you couldn't see the markers to get straight. First and 10 for Washington. From the 39-yard line, Brunel going deep. Just over the outstretched hands of freshman Jason Shelley. Shelley had his man beat, and the ball was just overthrown, but a good throw by Mark Brunel. Shelley, a rare Bird in this Husky defense, uh, excuse me, Husky offense. He is a freshman. Don James very seldom ever has a true freshman playing for him. He's got two. Shelley, number 18, and Theron Hill, who caught a 68-yard touchdown pass against Stanford. And Shelley's last three games, 14 catches, 279 yards, and a touchdown. Torrey Hunter was the man on the coverage. Second and 10 from the 39. Brunel looks near side and no, didn't have control of it. Bruner was there and finally uh, Hill came down with it, but not in time as we go to New York and John Saunders. Marcus Lee, 15 yards. Looks like a touchdown. They're really down at the one, but Marvin Graves punched it in 16-10 in the fourth quarter. Roger. Whoa. Here come the Orangemen. Oh. Let's shake things up just a little bit. Yeah, nothing safe at the top. Still 11 minutes to go in that game. On third down and 10 for the Huskies, Kaufman has it near side, and that was a fine football play by Singor Mobley right there. That's the problem on this kind of field with an elusive back like Kaufman. He just can't make those moves because you got nowhere to go with all that slipping and sliding. You slip and slide, what you have to do is just take it and make a cut and go upfield. But that time he couldn't do it because right where we had on this play is we had a little eight on eight. I'm not talking about passing. I'm talking about Mobley on Kaufman. So on fourth down and six, Washington trailing 35 to seven. 11 34 left to go here in Pullman. We'll go for it. Now Brunel checking off at the line of scrimmage. He puts Kaufman in the slot to the far side. He just needs six for the first down. He's thinking about run. Now. He eludes one tackler, two men on him, he gives it up. Back at the 45-yard line, his third sack today, Todd Shaw, 82, the man who got in there, and there were a number of crimson jersey Washington State Cougars who finally got to him, and what a great, that was a coverage sack because there was nowhere to throw the football. For those who want to drive something really foreign, the Lumina, fully independent sports suspension, anti-lock brakes, fuel-injected V6. For more details and a test drive, see your Chevrolet dealer. When you publish thousands of newsletters a week, color is out of the question. Invest in the fastest highlight color laser printer and come to a different conclusion. 
intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. It our sales figures were confusing. No one understood them. With our digital color copier, you get the clarity of color with the stroke of a pen and touch of a screen. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. Well, we the it seems Europeans have a passion for certain things, American. And one of them happens to be the reliable, efficient delivery of a certain American delivery company, UPS. Fact is, we've built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So next time you need something shipped there, use the outfit Europeans find, well, so fashionable. UPS, we run the tightest ship in Europe. Mike Price on the left, Don James on the right. The score, 35 to seven, Washington State leads Washington. The last two years, the Huskies have beaten Washington State by a combined 80 points. The last two Washington State wins over Washington, each by one point apiece. First and 10, Bledsoe's chased. He gets rid of it, it's picked off. Intercepted, a bad decision there by Drew Bledsoe, and Washington has the football at the 36-yard line. Jaime Fields, number three, with the interception, his first of the year. The first big mistake by this offensive unit this afternoon he's just trying to get it over the head to the receiver that's over there but he doesn't get anything on it and it's picked off that was a situation Lynn on a first down when you're up 35 7 just go ahead and fall down you know yeah. you don't need to make a big play right because now. it's just as important to keep the ball and run the clock as it is to move it down the field now the officials are once again coming to the sideline and conferring and want to remind you at the conclusion of today's game we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team and for the 22nd year through the Chevrolet scholarship program $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school so uh, you folks at home uh, get an idea and uh, Lynn and I will uh, get an idea well my idea at this point <laughs> yeah we've got a pretty good idea don't we I think maybe uh Drew. Drew Bledsoe, but look at unsportsmanlike conduct against Washington State. They've stepped it off down to the 22-yard line, and so with 11-13 to go, Washington still working, still trying. As they go outside and going nowhere is number 42, Jay Berry, because Torrey Hunter was right there to meet him, as you see Stanford in the game, handing it to California. Glenn Milford really finishing up strong this year. In these weather conditions, it allows a defensive bat, when you're coming up to cover a sweep or a play like that, Roger, to really get in one position and take it on. Because you know the bat can't make all those cuts and all those moves. Second down and nine from the 20. Colorado staying in contention for that Orange Bowl bid. Brunel, near side, right through the hands of Damon Berry, the sophomore from North Glen, Colorado. Uh, we haven't talked, uh, Lynn, as you take a look, Missouri with the upset over Kansas today in the Big 8, but we haven't talked about the bowl scenario for the other Pac-10 teams because besides the Rose Bowl, the, uh, the uh, Pac-10 is affiliated with uh, a number of other bowl games, so there's a lot of scenarios yet to be played out this weekend about who goes where. And Mike Price was very concerned about what would happen if his team didn't win this afternoon and not having the chance of going to a bowl game, but with an 8-3 record, they should be in the bowl. On third and nine, Brunel, pump fake, going down, broken up. The intended receiver was Bornson, but Greg Burns was there to break it up. Greg Burns, sophomore, came into the game with five interceptions. Just making a good play. And Washington State, with the exception of the second quarter of this ball game, has really executed much better in a higher level than the Cougars. Absolutely. I mean, than the uh, Huskies. On fourth and nine, Washington trailing 35 to seven. We'll go for it. 10 24 left to play here from Pullman as Brunel turns back and he's got a screen set up to Barry, and Barry dropped the football. Now they're going to say an incomplete pass. Man, that thing was set up. 
He had four offensive linemen over there, and all he had to do was catch it and get behind him. Yeah, well, I saw one red shirt that was over there coming in to make a play. Somehow seemed to squeeze by, but look at how well it is set up. Everybody's moving to the left there. He turns. There's a wall. But look at number 31, Childs. He's coming to the inside of that wall. The lineman's got to shift over and pick him up. They can't just stay stationary there. He's got to break that formation, pick him up, give the, the receiver a chance to make the catch. So the ball will go over to Washington State on downs. And with 10-15 left to go, the Cougars lead the Huskies 35-7, to first and 10 from the 20-yard line. And they'll hand it to Sparks. And he gets two. And uh, coming up uh, here on ABC Sports next Saturday, I'll we'll tell you about uh, some high-stakes action from out in the desert as it's a skins game. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, some of the greats, including Greg Norman and Payne Stewart, Freddie Couples, and Tom Kite. That's all coming to you next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific here on ABC Sports. I feel like I've gone from Hawaii 5-0 to Northern Exposure. I was over doing <laughs> well, golf. you have. I was doing golf in Maui last week, and I'm up here. Not, not kind of, literally. Not literally. You're in the great Northwest, and it's cold. 16-10, Miami leading Syracuse on second and eight for Washington State. Clock now down to 9.30, and they'll give it to Sparks right up the middle as he's across the 25 to the 28-yard line. I have to believe the Huskies of Washington were just not in this ball game mentally. They have not played with the uh, the aggressive tendency, the execution that's a hallmark of a Don James football team. Maybe they just couldn't find the focus to come into this ball game. I don't know. It certainly, I would certainly have to believe that Don James would not allow his team to overlook the Washington State team to be looking down the road at the Rose Bowl, but they certainly have lacked the intensity in this ball game. I agree with you 100 uh, percent, Lynn. Other than that. Uh, Second quarter, this has been all Washington State. Third down and two for the Cougars. Sparks gets it, tries the left side, nothing there as Jamal Fontaine, the junior from San Francisco, was uh, right there to make the stop. This is, uh, this is a game about attitude, uh, folks. This is, uh, this is the, uh, the west side against the east side. This is the uh, State University in a town of 23,000 that includes the students against the State University from the big city of Seattle. This is against the national championship. This is against a team that's always trying to get respect. And if you've ever gone to a state school wherever, and I've been one of those people that have, you understand about the, the attitude of the whole situation and the feeling and the meaning that goes into it. And the attitude today by Washington State was not, we've got to play our best game. We just have to play a good game. As the punt was fumbled, Johnston's running for the stakes, and he doesn't get it. And the Huskies are going to get good field position once again against the Cougars. And with 7.55 left to go, the University of Washington will take possession of the football. And once again, the Washington State defense will be challenged. So with 7.55 left to go here in Pullman, Washington, the Cougars, who last week were just, they were thinking about a potential Rose Bowl situation before being beat by Stanford. This week, they were just hoping to get somebody interested in them if they could win this game to get to a bowl. They've got it in sight as Brunel once again scrambling up the middle, and he is down at the 21-yard line, a gain of about eight there by Mark Brunel, the senior from Santa Maria, and he comes up holding his left arm you see him grabbing his arm right there. And with Billy Joe Hobart gone, the backup is Damon Heward, a redshirt freshman. That redshirt freshman has quite a tremendous arm. I told yep. you about the freshman receiver, Theron Hill, who caught a 68-yard touchdown pass last week against Oregon State. It was Huard who threw that pass to him. He's got a rifle. Second and two, as Brunel will swing it to Kaufman. A lot of crimson shirts right there, and a penalty mark. That's going to be a face mask at the 24-yard line. McClanahan and Mobley were there on the tackle. And that'll go against Washington State. This defense of Washington State, and we were talking to Mike Zimmer, their coordinator, is so intense that earlier this year, 
when they were blowing out Temple up here, late in the game on a kickoff, the scout team guys were in, and Temple took a kickoff back for a touchdown, and the starters were so upset that that happened. I mean, they have a lot of pride. They just don't want people to score, and I'm sure they're thinking right now, 35 to 7. We have got the Washington Huskies, who this year, other than the Arizona game, where they only scored three, has been a very prolific offensive team, and Brunel on first down, running inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Brunel taking a number of hits here as he's trying to make something happen. He picks up 16 yards on the play. Childs and Mobley make the tackle. Now with the Rose Bowl coming up, and him being the starting quarterback, only an inexperienced man behind him, you know, you have to start <laughs> being a little bit careful, which is how much you expose him to that kind of hit late in the ball game. First and goal, two yard line. Kaufman is pulled ahead, but it looked like he was stopped. Lewis Bush, 48, the senior from Tacoma, who uh, missed the first two games this year because of that broken bonus. But before that, it started 27 straight games. One of the few seniors on this uh, defense for So the Cougars and the Huskies down the goal line. Second and goal from the one. Brunel with the sneak and the touchdown. So with 5.50 left to go, Mark Brunel on the quarterback sneak gets his second touchdown of the day. Now as they unpile and they'll get ready for the extra point, they'll make a decision probably whether they should go for one or two. I have to believe that on their kickoff, Roger, if they're not going to go for the onside kick to get the ball back, to really possess this football, then Don James might as well take Mark Brunel out of the ball game. Okay. All right, and put this back up. If he believes he can come back and overtake the Cougars or win this game, then he'll go for the onside kickoff and he'll keep Brunel in there. But I think you have to get to, the, in this point in the ball game, you commit yourself totally or you start to protect yourself a little bit for a Rose Bowl game that you do have. Brunel is taking a lot of hits trying to bring this team back. So they'll go for the two-point conversion here. 35-13. Washington State leads Washington as Brunel throws it in the end zone, and they got it. The two-point conversion to Damon Mack. And with 5.50 left to go, the Cougars lead. There's a tropical island that's not on any map, though it's easy to find. It's warmed by the sun and caressed by the winds with its own hidden treasures, local delicacies, and exotic festivals. But this island moves. It's a carnival cruise ship. So if you go, get there on time and get out your visa card. Because the world's most popular cruise line doesn't stay in one place for long, and it doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. For 65 grand, this Corvette ZR1 comes with anti-lock brakes, a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, and a roadside assistance program. For under nine grand, this Cavalier VL also comes with anti-lock brakes, the warranty, the roadside assistance program, and unlike the vet, has this handy cup holder. Hey, 65 grand for the vet and no slide-out cup holder? I'd go for the Cavalier. This Magnavox portable CD player with pure digital sound is the best thing to take on vacation. Unless you compare it with this clever Magnavox 5-inch TV. Great pictures of anywhere. Course, the best is this compact yet intelligent Magnavox camcorder with autofocus. Unless you take this Magnavox 3-inch LCD TV which connects to my camcorder so I can watch my vacation on the ride home. Looks as though I had a pretty good time. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart. Very smart. And welcome back here to Pullman. Along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twibell. As the Cougars gave the Huskies three pretty good opportunities there, and they finally cashed in the third time. Five plays, 29 yards. Uh, time 2.05 after the interception. 
that uh, was thrown by Drew Bledsoe, who uh, Bledsoe's thrown two or more interceptions ten times in his career, and he's uh, two previous games against uh, Washington. He's, he's thrown uh, at least two. As you see him line up now, the onside kick, they've got everybody to the near side, and they send it over there, and it's loose. No. The ball doesn't go that 10 didn't yards. Didn't go 10 yards, did it? Only went five. He had the ball spinning laterally, just rolling. It wasn't going end over end, but the long way of the football. It looked like if he gave it enough, enough time, it would actually come back <laughs> to the original line of scrimmage. But you watch it here. You want this to go end over end and bounce up high, but here it's not doing that, coming back towards that line of scrimmage. He saw it was hit by the Husky player prior yeah. to going to Mobley. yards. Got it. Finally for Washington State covered it. So Bledsoe now with 550 left to go. His team leading by 20. First and 10 from the 41 yard line is all handed to Sean Bay right there and Washington with three timeouts remaining. So the deal here is just to use as much off that uh, clock as you possibly can. Try to keep it down at that end of the field. Of it course. It seems like a simple thing to do, but so far, the Cougars have had major problems mm -hmm. possessing the football and keeping it back, keeping it in the Husky end of the field. You watch them. The shot clock is down there going down to 17-18 at the far end zone, behind each end zone. You watch it. He shouldn't snap that ball any earlier than five seconds on that clock. Well, the game clock uh, and the... I mean, excuse me, the game clock. <laughs> it's down to the shot clock. The play clock and the game clock. We've got the clocks and Sean Bay right there, right up the middle. Touchdown. I think I hear someone singing. A very broad lady somewhere is singing the Cougar fight song. Obviously, the Huskies had everybody at the line of scrimmage trying to stop the run with a quick hitting play right up the middle. Offensive line doing a terrific job. Sends right there. Federal Express into the end zone. I mean, they just caught Washington asleep. They caught him flat footed as they worked the uh, play clock down to uh, one second when he made the snap. And Aaron Price to attempt the point after. Sean Bay right there with his third touchdown run of the day. The point after is good. 22 carries, 193 yards for the senior from Seaside, California. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved smooth operator. The new smooth operator two with float control is the only razor to unite the comfort of twin and dependent floating heads with the closeness of a warm, wet shave. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. The new smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic, smoother than you ever thought you would be. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a Die Hard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard, the battery you can count on for more power when you need it most. Hollywood Pictures presents con man Thomas Johnson. Read my lips! He's going to do to Congress <laughs> what Congress has been doing to you. Ow! Eddie Murphy. Been wrong with my stick. The Distinguished Gentleman. This film is not yet rated. Starts December 4th. The higher you go, the more power you need. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. That's why up here they depend on the most horsepower ever in a turbo diesel pickup. I go around. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. I go 42-15, Washington State leads Washington in the 85th meeting between these two teams. They played for the, uh, the Apple Cups in 62, and it's been lopsided uh, toward the, uh, the west side of the state. And it looks like...
back. The apple cup that the Huskies brought down for the game is going to stay here. Kickoff goes out of bounds. The, uh, the flag goes down, and with five minutes left to go, Mark Brunel is going to go back out onto the field. And uh, what do you think, Mike? Well, I've already stated what I yeah. I just think as a consideration. Thought you'd reiterate. Dangerous situation, slippery field. He's got a Rose Bowl game left to play. Three timeouts left for Washington is Drew Bledsoe. He came up big today, folks. This was this was some kind of performance by the whole team, but especially him. We showed you the numbers earlier. Seven interceptions uh, in the last five games. And they just run it up the middle there. And that's one way to, to keep it warm. The players today with all the man-made fibers and thermal wear are a lot better off with the flexibility they have when they put it under their uniforms. You know, when I, I asked that question about the coldest you've been, I mean, I know you're thinking the Iditarod dog sled race. Uh, Minus when, 70. When, when I, when I, then I threw football. Uh, I, knew, I knew there was a catch there. Mine was Red Square myself. That was in December. That was a, a little chilly. Second and six from the 38. They'll swing it near side, and the uh, catch made over there by number six, Damon Mack, the senior from Gardena, California. And a minute and a half to go. Syracuse has the football at the 15-yard line. 50-yard line. At the 50-yard line, so they need a touchdown and the extra point. Huskies first and 10 at the 46. Brunel going to his right, trying to get it out of bounds, and he is taken out of bounds at the 44-yard line by Kurt. Lurcher, a senior from Montesano, Washington, and I'll tell you, they will cougar down this evening. What up, Ma? What up, Dan? Things are quiet on the Husky side. Yeah. You know, the well, disappointment. Gonna, they're looking at an undefeated season. Kind of the, interesting Rose Bowl this year, won't it? With uh, Michigan with three ties and uh, and uh, Washington. Well. The fact remains, they are still in the Rose Bowl. That's exactly they right. They should be I mean, that's the bottom extraordinarily line. pleased with that yeah. and play with a great deal of pride they representing have, the Pac-10. And they have and a the chance to do something no team has ever done, win three straight as Brunel sends it downfield. And he's got his wide receiver, Jason Shelley, who is finally caught from behind inside the 10 by Greg Burns with 3.43 left to go. Only a freshman. He came into this ball game with 18 catches for 330 yards. That's an average of 18.3 per catch and two touchdowns. 48 yards on the pickup. First and goal from the eight-yard line. And Brunel will just slam it down to stop the clock. Don James will confer with his quarterback. We started talking about Shelley, number 18, just a bit, Roger. He is actually paying his own way to the University of Washington. Drafted by the Atlanta Braves. He played in their rookie league this summer. He's very confident. You know, has excellent skill. You know, he's just going to have to get a little more experience. But uh, this guy is a game breaker that they think is going to have a great impact on the football team next year. Clifford's another guy who plays pro baseball and plays for the University of Washington. On second and goal from the eighth, they pitch it back to Barry, and there is nothing there. At the 14-yard line, he is manhandled by Burns and rushing, and penalty markers go flying everywhere because number 41, Anthony McClanahan, and a couple of the University of Washington offensive linemen were getting into it. And with 3.25 left to go, you just don't need that. I mean, you've done all your talking by what you have accomplished so far in this game. So what the coaches need to do right now, or one of the players on the defensive unit for Washington State, is to settle them down and not mar a victory by unnecessary roughness and that kind of conduct. And 
I believe they've thrown McClanahan out of the game because he's left the field. So he's either been ejected or Mike Price has removed him. I would think they were. Yeah, he, no, he has been thrown out of the ejected? game. Yeah, he has been ejected. So McClanahan, 41 with eight tackles on the day. Terrific football player. Just a junior. Oh, maybe, maybe the referee is just so cold he can't make that signal. You know, you just can never be too careful in, in games like this, Lynn, with, with weather conditions uh, like this. Uh, I remember a, a University of Arizona game uh, years ago against Utah and saw like 27 to nothing. Arizona led it starting the fourth quarter, started snowing. Utah scored four touchdowns, one at 28 27. I mean, a lot of things can happen in what? this sort of weather. M many times it's just mental. Yeah. The snow comes down, you think you can't do something without even trying. You've got to push yourself, make the strong cuts. And if you can't make it, and if you slip and fall down, fine, pull back a little bit, but at least try your hardest so you know whether or not, you know, you can do it. First and goal from the five, and Darius Turner gets about two. Well, you know, McClanahan was a guy who earlier this week they asked, uh, they, they cut off all interviews with the media because he was talking so much about what he was going to do and what they were going to do to the Huskies, and they just kind of felt it's better, you know, let's not incite anything. Yeah, He's a not talkative, give them any fuel. talkative sort of guy. Napoleon Kaufman, same way for what? Very talkative sort of guy out on the field. And McClanahan will have to watch these final two and a half minutes. Says, Matt, right there. Man, nowhere to go for Jay Berry because number 56 TJ for Folkers. Washington State, T.J. Folkers. You got it, Swanee. I met him head on and dropped him. Folkers getting an opportunity to play. Watch him. He's right in the middle of the picture. Just steps into the hole, gets down low, a little bit off balance, but he hangs on to a leg for a good stop. And the clock continues to roll. What do you think? Do you think maybe now here in Washington, at Washington State, they will always hope for snow? I think so. Why not? Third down and goal from the two. Less than two minutes to go. Broken up. The intended receiver was Shelley, and Burns was there on the coverage. Burns having a fine afternoon. He has been there when it's counted, making great plays. Deflecting passes from the end zone. You'll see he'll wait to the last minute. And boom, he makes the pop. And it's an incomplete pass. A thing of beauty for a man in the defensive secondary. So fourth and goal from the two-yard line with 153 left to go. First man throughs, got it, touchdown. Darius Turner off the right side. And once again, separating players away from the ball as the Huskies get it in with 149 left to go. Darius Turner, whose uncle is the boomer, George Scott, used to play with the Red Sox. His second touchdown of the season, he runs straight ahead. You see the power he has as he takes on one of the Cougar players. That's number 56, Folkers. He just takes him on and then continues to drive into the end zone. Brunel directing his players on the two-point conversion try, and they've got it. Jay Berry, the man who receives the pass. And with 149 left to go, the Cougars lead the Huskies 42-23. Christmas is about families, and so is this computer, the Tandy 20... Expires, 16-10, number one survives, Roger. Ooh, real close, real close at the Carrier Dome. Drew Bledsoe is back in the ball game, and kind of interesting because of where he is yardage-wise. Yeah, uh, Lynn, he needs uh, just uh, two yards passing to move into second place in the all-time career total offense uh, behind... The throw in Samoa and Jack Thompson to move past Tim Rosenbaugh. But at this point, or he could run too, he could throw a run. He just needs to get a couple of yards. And with 147 left to go, they're going to hand it off. And the hole is there for Sparks. And let's uh, tell you about our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the Game. And from the University of Washington, it'll be Mark Brunel, a couple of touchdown runs today. And for Washington State University, Drew Bledsoe. 
as he completed so far 18 of 31 260 yards couple touchdowns one interception Chevrolet will donate a thousand dollars to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need congratulations to those two players clock running 106 and Sparks will just lean on the right side on second down and five John Bay right there, you, you, you'd like to give a couple of trophies out. As you look at Mike Price, going to get his first win against Washington, but Sean Bay with a career high, 193 yards rushing and three touchdowns. The biggest victory for Washington State in this series was in 1973, 52-26, when Chuck Peck threw for 249 yards. Uh, this isn't going to be as big a win as far as point total, but in the scope of things, this is a bigger win. A tremendous victory for the entire program of Mike Price and Washington State Cougars. And Bledsoe will kneel down. Washington, 478 yards total offense, and maybe the last play for Drew Bledsoe at Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington, as the clock will run down, or it's stopped now with 17 seconds. Now the official says, just go ahead and run it. Fans are coming out on the field. Mark Brunel will make his way. He's a senior. He's got the Rose Bowl to look forward to, and hopefully Washington State has a bowl game. A heart-wrenching heart loss for Mark Brunel. We saw the emotion as he was walking off the field. A senior not wanting to be the guy who led his team to this loss. 42-23, the final score from Pullman is Washington State beats Washington. For all of us here at ABC Sports, I'm Roger Twibell. For Lynn Swan, thanks for being with us as the Cougars get the Apple Cup. For 19 to 23, and the celebration will go on through the night. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce King. We invite you now to stay tuned for the Apple Cup postgame show. We'll go to both locker rooms. We'll talk to the Washington State players about their big win today. We'll talk to the Huskies about what went wrong with their attack in the blizzard, in the snow here in uh, Pullman, Washington. So again, stay tuned. And if you want to talk to the players, you call 421 Live right now. We'll try to get you on. Sports Washington has launched a new monthly magazine dedicated totally to Husky sports. This new purple edition will include interviews with the players and coaches, as well as feature articles and reports on all of the current Husky news with constant recruiting updates. You'll receive the football preview edition, the bowl game special edition, and the recruiting spectacular, along with your monthly issues. And if you subscribe today, Sports Washington will send you this Dog Father 3 poster absolutely free. Just call the number on your screen now. Operators are standing by to begin your subscription. <laughs> There's a dry chill blowing down from the Rockies. Coors Dry, double chilled for brewery fresh taste and a finish as clean as ice. Then deliver mountain cold to your store. It's not just a better dry, this is a better beer. Coors Dry, feel the chill. The front runner who refused to stay down tonight. Welcome live to Pullman, Washington. You see the celebration by the goalposts as the Cougars of Washington State win the Apple Cup game over Washington by a score of 42 to 23. And you can see the Cougar locker room there, and they're very, very excited. And they're the Huskies as they go into their locker room. But keep in mind, Washington is headed to Pasadena on New Year's Day. This game really didn't have any effect on that. But oh, what a win it is for Washington State today. And the Cougars, as we'd mentioned earlier, are going to be celebrating all night. Yes, big, big win as they win the Apple Cup. First time in four years that they've won it. And they won it big today. 42 to 23. A very, very impressive third quarter. And the win was 
Well, they were able to put it all together and, and get the points on the scoreboard in, in a one a windy, snowy day here in Pullman. I tell you, I've been covering the Apple Cup and Husky football and the Cougars since 1968, and I've never seen a day like this. They've never had to play in this kind of snowstorm. We welcome you back again, and I'll tell you something. It's been some kind of day, a lot of fun for everybody if you enjoy being out in this. And with me right now is the defensive coordinator for the University of Washington, Jim Lambright. And Jim, what went wrong in that third quarter for Husky <laughs> fans? Because they score three touchdowns in seven minutes and just blow this game wide open. I'll tell you, they, uh, they did a great job with game plan today. Uh, uh, the weather made us a little too cautious early. And uh, uh, the third quarter, when, uh, when they chose the wind, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Took, took the ball, made some, made some plays. We had uh, defensive backs kind of tippy-toeing, afraid of falling down. Uh, uh, and uh, the weather put us in shock too much. I, I really didn't expect the defense to react at all that way. And again, I, I don't mean to take anything ever away from the Cougars. They, they did a great job with their plan. Uh, Bledsoe had a great day. Uh, Sean B. Wright Fair uh, in their counter play. Uh, uh, shoot, a couple hundred yards. Uh, yes. Seemed like a thousand. And you'd sit <laughs> talking about somebody having fun over here. I didn't see much fun today. <laughs> I was saying the Cougars <laughs> had a lot of fun today because the Cougars are really celebrating right now and, and a big win for them, a very important win. They went yeah. into season now with an 8-3 and three record and that's very, very important yeah. as they win the Apple Cup and you can hear the excitement now in that locker room. I think a lot of people felt uh, that Washington headed to Pasadena on New Year's Day would come over here, win the conference championship outright and just head to Southern California as the fifth ranked team in the country uh, picking up their 10th win but all at once Washington State seemed to have some intensity and, and was Washington did you get the feeling that you were a little flat today or am I putting uh, too many words in your mouth there no I uh, I don't think we were flat I, I felt real good this morning about the kids I felt good in the warm-up the, the problem was adjusting to the footing I think we got real tentative because we were afraid to fall on the ground and mm -hmm. uh, uh, so our defensive backs and the linebackers both uh, uh, really did a poor job of uh, playing run and pass combination. Uh, uh, ended up being in the middle of nowhere a whole lot of the time today as opposed to making anything positive happen. And it's very difficult. This weather was just incredible. We, uh, you know, came to the ballpark oh, about 10 o'clock this morning, 10.30, and it was snowing so hard. It was just unbelievable. You're looking now in the, the Cougar locker room, and Mike Price is there, and the celebration. You know what that's all about, Jim. You've been there before. <laughs> That's, uh, those are those are fun locker rooms, and uh, uh, like I say, they they deserve to be extremely excited and pleased with the way they played and the, the way the game plan went today. Uh, they uh, they came out and took it to us. Uh, uh, I really felt right the first series of the game really set the tone. I was uh, I was very disappointed with the fact that we couldn't take the win and hold them down, and uh, we got a stupid personal foul right away, and then a cu couple of big plays for them, and well, took it all away. That's right. There was a fumble. The ball was on the ground, and uh, Washington State recovered it. Then they were able to, on a tip pass, uh, get down inside the five and go in to score the touchdown. And I, I don't think you can put enough on, on momentum in this game. Uh, now we really felt defensively we had to come out and establish something and not not let them stay in the game with us because uh, they've got a whole lot to gain in this uh, in this uh, uh, game as far as potential not just talking rights in our state but but bowl possibilities I mean they can they can stand very proudly now and say hey gee, we deserve to be in a bowl why look at our record absolutely they are eight and three and they do it so impressively today I thought Drew Bledsoe just got so hot your defensive secondary all at once it looked like you couldn't stop him uh, that he uh, he did a great job checking we were uh, we were not in position to uh, to stop him when we were zones. He did a great job reading our zone coverage and threw underneath it, and all of a sudden they're picking up six, eight, nine yards. Uh, real easy completions because uh, uh, we couldn't take it away from him. And then we went into some man stuff, and uh, and they ran away from us a couple of times. Uh, James Clifford, uh, a couple of different uh, a deep ball uh, there in the third quarter where uh, where, where Shane Palco is sitting in the middle of the field just wasn't himself because he could not break on the ball. Okay, let's go back to the Cougar locker room right now. Listen to Mike Price. Hold on, right here. Congratulations. Great job.
the Apple Cup presentation made by the governor of the state, Booth Gardner. Shall we listen again? Let's stay in the locker room right now with Mike Price and the Cougars for just a moment. This is what goes on after a football game. was Drew Bledsoe giving the game ball to head coach Mike Price, his first Apple Cup win in a very big moment. A fun in the Cougar locker room. I got to tell you back here as you watch right now, we have the offensive coordinator for Washington State with us, Ted Williams. And he's on the other side here and he joins us right now. Ted, congratulations on a great game plan and just an excellent football game Thank today. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah. Now, what were your feelings coming into this thing? You have Jim Lamb right, right next to you. What did you think you could do to Washington? Well, we felt like we could not allow them to just tee off on us. Um, I mean, they have great football players and you got to do some things uh, with your game plan to try to slow down their athletic ability. So we had hoped that we could run the football. We felt we could run the football. We could kind of keep them a little bit off balance and make them not blitz as much and bring people, you know, pressure on us. And uh, the running game, that as it stayed, you know, positive throughout the game, gave us more courage, you know, to keep up with it and mm -hmm. stay with it. And I think that helped us the most was to be able to run the football. Yeah. Weather today, the advantage to the offense, because you knew where you were going? I think so. I, I think that uh, defensively, we, we felt like we, you know, we weren't very good on defense because we couldn't run around. Uh, it negated, I think, Washington's speed as well as our speed as well. So. You know, I think the running game, you know, for both teams uh, uh, caused both teams some problems. And because uh, you couldn't, you know, once once you started in one direction, you couldn't change and come back. And that was the biggest problem. There was no mobility to be able to change direction. So if you come a little bit off guard and a little bit out of position, then the runs will be able to break. Okay. You know, the weather factor here in Pullman, obviously, the weather a factor around the state. So let's go to Seattle right now. And Steve Poole. Steve? Well, Bruce, while uh, folks celebrate, uh, Cougar fans especially, most of the populated areas in western Washington can breathe a bit of a sigh of relief now because we are now getting word that the high wind warning is being canceled for most of western Washington. It looks like a good portion of that storm is headed to the north of us, so a lot of folks will get away not scot-free. It'll still be breezy, but uh, most of you won't feel too much from this. However, it has been rough on some folks, and let's show you, first of all, what's been going on over on the coast where strong winds came ashore there. This is the view just north of Westport. You can see how strong the winds are and, and the effect that it's had on the ocean there. We had winds up to 60 miles per hour along the coast with the roughest area be being between Destruction Island and Cape Flattery. 
Now, there are still some warnings up in some areas of concern. I don't want everyone to just uh, totally relax here. We've got wind advisories up along the coast and through the central Puget Sound Basin. That's a downgrade from the warning. So we're backing off this a little bit, and we expect it to just be wind.